He never flew, but in his childhood, he was an unaccompanied minor. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. The church is going to mandate get it on. What did you just say, guy? Yeah, Harlan Williams in <laughs> Whoa, the studio. Tongue tied already, guy. Harlan's got dates, Ontario, Canada. You've been up to Canada before? Showtime Comedy Club. That'll be uh, May uh, 24th to the 25th. St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. And uh, then also Wise Guys Comedy Club. That'll be in Vegas. Coming yes. Up June 7th and 8th. Yes. HarlanWilliams.com is where you go. And then the podcast, The Harlan Highway. Always exciting to do that show. Too. Yeah, you got to come back on soon. You know, anytime you want me, Harlan. What are you doing this afternoon? Uh, absolutely not today. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got, I got questions laugh. for you, Harlan. Okay. I got answers for you, Adam. Uh, Both, uh, you know, a little bit hypothetical, but I want to get your take. Yeah, please. Okay. So the other night I'm doing a Netflix is a joke thing, and I got my set up with Leno and um, Rob Schneider and um, folks, Jay Moore, and people are going to come out and do the show, right? Yeah, like a stand-up show? Stand-up show. Okay. And I find myself in the bathroom. Now, Now, before I left... And Wait, you it, found yourself in the bathroom, so there's a clone of you? No. <laughs> no, I, you know what? I, I, that, my phraseology was all off on that one. Oh. Yeah. On I you. walked into the bathroom. Okay. Right. And were but you there? True. No, no, I think we're getting off point here. Okay, I, There's sorry. no second me in this, but I know what you're saying. Well, Finding you said you found in yourself the, in the bathroom. Were you taking a shit or a piss? Well, that's what it seems like. It seems like when I say I found myself in yeah. the bathroom, I opened a stall door and, and saw me right. in the pot. And was there a glory hole? <laughs> Yeah. What was going on in that you bathroom know, I was, with you? I was just using a phrase saying, like, oh, I, okay. found, I found myself in trouble. You know what okay, I mean? Okay, so, be- oh, you didn't metaphysically find yourself, did no, you? Like, spiritually? I like, finally, I found myself, and it smells like meatloaf in here. No, but okay. it smelled like something else. Yeah. So, okay. earlier that evening, just about 45 minutes or an hour before I left for the uh, for the gig, uh, I see a... a there's a beautifully baked asparagus at my home. And I go, I like asparagus. I pop one in my mouth. And I'm like, oh, man, these taste better than any asparagus I've ever had. And I ate like 28 sprigs Whoa, of asparagus. Dude, what are you, just, a Galapagos I tortoise? I, I know, Who eats I, so I, much I, asparagus? You're right. I, that's what I, it, it really was a, a Galapagos tortoise, and I was just feeding off a kelp, you know? God. And I found myself standing. You ever find yourself just standing by the tray that came out of the oven and whatever's on it, and you just pop one, and you go, fuck it, I'm popping another. And you go, this is awesome. Yeah. And when it's not bad for you, like when you do it with the dino nuggets or the tater tots, a part of your brain kicks in and goes, okay, I shouldn't. Yeah. I've had five. The Pillsbury, anything Pillsbury that pops out of a canister. Yeah. Right. But this is asparagus. It's good for you. And I just, I go, God, this is great. I just, I pop 25, 28 in my mouth. Good Lord. And then I leave for the club. On the way over, were you chewing your cud? Yes. I mean, that's a lot. A lot. You could brought it back up and yeah. chewed. Oh, so then I get sick. to the club, oh, and I got God. an hour-long drive, and I walk into the men's room, and they have the toilet, but it's the no-water flow toilet. It's the toilet that is just, sorry, it is just the urinal with no water hooked up to it. You ever see those? No. What do you mean? They it's a water. waterless urinal. No, no. I had one at my other shop for right. like 15 years a ago. A waterless urinal. You, okay, I'm vexed by this. You have peed in many a waterless urinal because they're at airports all around the country. They're at clubs. They're, you can't flush them. You can't flush them. You can't? Have you, have you Harlan <laughs> Williams, never seen this? I probably never noticed it. I just assumed you wee in a urinal and there's going to be water to, to rinse it out. No. There's... So it just sits there stale like an open mouth? At a... Well, the way it actually works is they have some sort of pod or lozenge or something that goes right underneath the plastic little sieve grate. Like a fisherman's friend? That kind of lozenge? I'd say fisherman's friend. Hall's meant the lip. But a hundred times bigger. Wow. You know? And it drops okay. in there and somehow it neutralizes something. But you've got to change that mint like every six months or something, which is where you'll get into trouble if you're like me and you don't do it for a decade oh, at my other wow. shop. It okay. gets fucked up. But 
You just pee into this thing and you walk away. Okay. All right. So With I'm a clear conscience. I'm standing in front of this in a small bathroom in a small club, and I'm whizzing into this waterless pot. And the first thing I notice is pure asparagus wafting up oh, back at God. me. Like I ate thirty pieces of asparagus. Whoa. I didn't eat anything else. I just popped everything and I left. How did it process that fast in forty-five minutes? It was well. What kind of enzymes me, do you have? Right, and you, me, you might have a tapeworm, guy. Sorry, is what let I'm me thinking. let me backtrack this. I did it about a half hour before I left Malibu, maybe an hour before I left Malibu. Ooh, and my, my, Malibu. Yeah. Ooh, Malibu asparagus. Ooh, excuse <laughs> us. It was about an hour drive <laughs> to the club. So I'm seeing that the smell of asparagus in urine can be detected as early as 15 minutes. Right, Whoa. but the, I, I was in the sweet spot, and you're yeah. right, and I'm glad you brought Thank brought that you. up. I was about two hours probably away oh, yeah. from when I, I did about a half hour before I left. Took me an hour to get to the club, and then I had to get Leno in there in the yeah. parking structure and get up into the club. And then yeah. at some point, when everyone got settled, I went to go take a piece. So it was like two hours. Okay. Yeah, the organizing Leno takes at least it's half an while. hour. Yeah. It's a while to organize. Because when you're parking him, he's got twelve cars, so you gotta like, yeah, hey, that's why you suddenly you're a valet, Convoy. you're directing uh, traffic. There's a lot of valet talk. You should have pissed in his car. I, I should have. You will. He's driving a Fiat electric. Anyway, yeah, I pee going. in this pot. I'm standing in this waterless toilet in a miniature bathroom. Whoa. I fill it up, and I'm being overwhelmed with the smell of asparagus right now. I'm like, oh, my God, this is nasty. And I turn around, and there's like a 35-year-old dude there, and he's like, I'm a super fan, ace man. And I go, hey, man. And he's like, hey, man. And I'm like, you should step back. Back from this pot of asparagus, like but I didn't want to say anything to him. What if he was a vegetarian? I, I still even vegetarians don't appreciate the smell of other people's asparagus pee. And asparagus, I, I, I the guy goes have, Latin on. I me. couldn't have flushed it. I couldn't flush. I didn't have. A, if I had a water in my hand, I would have thrown it at yeah, the toilet. It, it was just overwhelming. And he's like, Ace, we got to get a picture. We got to get a oh, picture. Oh God! And I'm like, Okay. And I'm trying to push him away from the pot. By, by, by the sink. Get by the sink. Oh, and what's worse is those urinals are engineered. They're kind of like a. a, a Jale, you know that sport that the Aztecs played? High lie. The, the, it's like a Kai Lai. High lie. High lie, you too, but I'm talking, yeah, high lie. They're, they're kind of engineered so that the, that the waft would kind of go in and curve back and out. And throw it in a yeah. fan's face. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I'm trying to push him away from my pot of asparagus. Could he piss. smell it? I don't know how he could miss it because... Were his eyes watering or bleeding? No, he was very excited to meet me. Yeah, but he met a tortoise instead. <laughs> wow. I, I feel like... I'm not, you know, uh, uptight, but I feel like you can't fanboy out inside of the bathroom. No. You have to kind of... You wish you had a fanboy. You have to take it out. I wish I had a f ceiling fanboy yeah. to get some of that f out of there. And yeah, I was so self-conscious about this crazy asparagus piss. I was oh. trying to push him away from the thing, and he kept coming in on me. I wanted to get a picture. At least it was a number one, though. Imagine oh, if yeah. you did like a Cracker Barrel blackened catfish thunder dump. Oh, a thunder And dunk. then the yeah. guy comes in for a hog, and he just like thinks he just sat down in a manure so spreader. So what do I do at this point? Do I bring up the asparagus? Do I not? Do I get a handful of... Do I take a mouthful of water from the sink and spit it like back into the toilet? I wanted to get it down. You know, well, away. here's the thing. You wanted to get it down because of him? Or because uh, anybody, of you. Anybody, the fact that I was being recognized in the bathroom and attached to the asparagus piece. But see, this the is the beauty of it. You're in a bathroom. It's like farting on an airplane. You can fart on an airplane all you want. Nobody knows There's who no, did it. Nobody else was in there, though. It was yeah, just but me. it's a bathroom. Like those odors linger around like poltergeist I, ghosts. I mean, I, I was taking a piss in a Denny's once and four watches fell through the ceiling. I mean, really? it's, yeah, it's total pulled. Like <laughs> those few. <laughs> <laughs> hang around like ghosts, dude. I just <coughs> asparagus up this pot, and then I turned wow. around, and he was standing there. I, there was no one wow. else in there. I don't know who else. Maybe we he was attracted it to it. Like maybe he <laughs> wanted an asparagus shower. It's he was there. playing it pretty close to the vest. If yeah, that was his thing. But either way, I wow. said nothing. Whoa, dude. Well, yeah, I think you you played it right because he can't know the source. Right. Uh, there's so many different odors. 
in a public bathroom. Mm-hmm. I mean, asparagus is just the beginning. Have you ever been in a Golden Corral buffet at like three in the morning in Bakersfield? Oh, yeah. Like, that's all the smells and a shell station rolled mm. into one. Like, it's, mm. y- you can't separate the stinks in a bathroom. So you're, you're okay. I don't you, know. Here's I'm what you do alone. next time. You yeah. go, you go, dude. Have you been eating asparagus? Yeah, put it on And you him. turn it on him, and he becomes the asparagus pissing Galapagos tortoise with the hundred year old, <laughs> you know, asparagus stink. And you go, dude, I can't do because you don't like to do pictures. So you're like, hey, I don't bro, mind. You I'm... hate them. <laughs> I can't do a picture right now, bro. I don't know what you did in that toilet, but I got to back it up, Nacho. And yeah, then he, it's on him. He and, just walked in, though. He, and I, you still blame him. You like, still dude, blame him? you stink. <laughs> just, um, bro, you freaking reek. Commit. All right. Well, yeah. I, have a, I have a hypothetical for you. <laughs> Wait. Okay. On top of this one? I got more. Okay. First, a quiz. We're asking all our senior guests. Senior? What's that mean? Because I got silver in my hair? More seasoned. Okay, I more like that. Bit. More mature. Mm-hmm. Did you watch the... Uh, are you familiar with the OJ trial? Yes, very familiar. Very familiar. I just wrote a... Sh- what, my latest book, I wrote a very, very wild short story about the whole OJ trial. So very familiar with the very trial. Very familiar. And yes. familiar with Judge Ito? Yes. All right. Do you think very familiar? Very familiar, like dating. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now that we familiar. know this, Adam, should we take a bet on if he will know this? If he'll know the answer. I'm going to say question. no, just on a track record of very impressive people not knowing it. Is it a question about Edo, or is yes. it a, okay? If it's about Edo. By the way, Edo asparagus or just Edo? <laughs> he ate oh, too much asparagus okay. and, uh, uh, and violated a fan. If it's Edo, I might not have the answer, but if it's, well, in, it's about the, it's the, the case trial. in general. It's the okay, trial. Hit, hit me, hit me. You said it's no. a hypothetical, though. No. So it's not I'm, real. Sorry, I'm moving into a hypothetical. This Whoa, is look very at you, real. Slow. This is very real. Okay, here we go. Judge Edo had on his bench a collection of what? He collected things, and he had them strewn about the bench during the trial. Yes. Yeah. Dr. Drew didn't get it. Jimmy Kimmel didn't get it. Joel McHale didn't get it. Jay Moore did get it. And so far, he's it. He had a collection of people's lives. Mm. No, uh, it's a physical thing, right? Yeah. I, you know what? I'd be like if you collected bobbleheads and you put yeah. them on your bench. Were they bobbleheads? Yes. No. <laughs> I thought you were down. trying to, you That's know, the old obvious yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, is there a bot? Well, I shouldn't say it. What? I was gonna. It, it, I was gonna. Oh, ask is there a Nicole Brown Simpson bobblehead? No, is there that a Michael J. Taste. Fox bobblehead? Oh, even worse. Yeah, even, even worse taste than yeah. my joke. So I, that's why I won't even ask. Don't it, even but, ask. But. Um, <laughs> Too soon. Um, I, I can't remember. Yeah, I, I wish okay. I knew. I love obscure, weird questions like this. Hourglasses. Oh, wow. Time pieces, but hourglasses, specifically. So he, so he must have had, like, really weird eyes if he could only wear them for an hour. No, no, hourglass, a way to measure time through sand. Yeah, that's probably why he could only wear them for an hour. He had sand in no, his No, no, he eyes. wasn't wearing glasses You said he had hourglasses. Hour. No, no, they're not like half hour glasses. Oh, two it's one hour of glasses. those places like Supercut. You go and they make your glasses in an hour. Let's see, how do I do this? You want one of those places? There, there's sand. Okay. And uh, they do use the sand when they melt it down to make the lenses of the glasses. But, right. but don't go down that road. <laughs> okay. Don't even think that way. Don't go down that road. There's dune. something oh, in olden times, Harlan. Oh, the, the hourglass. The like hourglass. these, are, you should have said these are the days of our lives, Dan. S- like dan, sand dan. through the, the hourglass. hourglass. These, these are, are the, the days, days of, of our Judge li- Ito's eyes. Li- life. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. How obscure. Why, why did he have hourglasses? He. he that was his hobby. That's what he collected. Is that appropriate in the middle of a trial where people have had their, their throats slashed open? They've been beheaded. 
uh, stabbed, bl- bloodletting, grisly, life's overturned, and this guy's showing his Beanie Baby collection <laughs> up on the on the stand. Like, isn't that a thing you have down in your basement or in a man cave? Like, I was, why does I, I feel the same way about bumper stickers? Like, whatever yeah. is you, fine. Don't advertise. I don't need to know what you're into. In my world, you're into this job. Well, it's one thing it. if you're driving to Dairy Queen in your in your Dodge Neon, but when you're overseeing a trial where people were brutally butchered in the middle of the night, mm. do we really want your hobby up there? I, I agree. mean, what if the guy was into taxidermy or My Little Pony? Yeah, we're talking about Nicole Brown Simpson getting her throat slashed open, and he's got a stuffed like pike on the back wall. Like, I, I agree. Yeah, yeah, weird. So they were on display during the trial. Uh, listen. The gr- the most compelling argument I can make for this is when they made the TV <laughs> movie about it, the set dresser put the p- hourglasses on the bench. So that's Weird. obviously from the trial. Huh. All right. Here is my, uh, my hypothetical for oh, you. Wow. It took a while. I wrote it down here. But I was talking about it with uh, Dr. Drew. At his uh, son's wedding. Cause is that is, grammatically is correct? Like, if he draws a picture, is, is he Dr. Draw? Or if Dr. he's in the middle Past of drawing? Or, or does or he. Present tense. Like, when he's finished, is he Dr. Drew? But mm. if you were to address him in the middle of him doing an illustration, Whilst is he drawing. Dr. Draw? That's a good point. Past tense. Yeah. I mean, I just want to get it right, guy. You know what? You know the luckiest. Guy. You know the luckiest. Individual in the United States and beyond is the guy from the Lucky Charm cereal box. You know the second luckiest guy is in the United States in terms of gainful employment. Ah, uh, who? Courtroom sketch artist. Oh wow! I'm sitting around looking at this Trump yeah. trial, and it's yeah. like he's got Stormy Daniels yeah. up there, and he's got Trump's looking pissed off over here, and then yeah. Michael Cohen's looking dumb over there, and it's like. We've had cameras for over 100 years. Yeah. This guy's job, it'd be, it'd be like if somebody said, what do you do? Uh, I do typewriter repair. Yeah. Okay, so not much of a job. No, no, the government is federally mandated that, yeah. I, that I still fix typewriters. And you go, but, but we don't need typewriters anymore. We, yeah. have, we have computers. And you go, I know, I know, but I still have yeah. a job because they made a rule that said they have to use typewriters in the courtroom, and I need to fix that. And it's like... That's kind of a weird place to be. You have a totally antiquated job that has yeah. been replaced by video cameras or even still cameras. Like, okay, no video. But yeah. wait, you can't take a picture? No, no. we got to see what Stormy Daniels looks like with a Sharpie and a crayon. It's well, like, can we take the word artist off of that, that, that title? They may because be the ultimate artist. No, Harlan. no. They're, they're drawings. You look at a sketch artist, a courtroom sketch slash artist. Donald Trump looks like he someone broke into the wax museum and melted him with a Bic lighter. Yeah. Stormy Daniels looks like she's floating around in a tornado. I mean, these artists did not take life drawing classes. I I think that's why they're 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 in the courtroom apparently sketching people because they don't have the skills to get a real job. As artists, no offense, I'm an artist, but Mm -hmm. a lot of these, they they go, this is Donald Trump. And I go, when did Donald Trump start looking like George Hamilton, for God's sake? Well, they did go heavy on the orange. Yeah, but just the face, the look, uh, the proportions, the anatomy. Looks like he got Donald Trump hit by a a, a truck or something. Okay, can we just put a fucking ring doorbell up in there and roll on it is is what I'm saying? Why am I looking? And then you get distracted by the pictures because you go... Jesus Christ, they drew huge bags under Michael Cohen's eyes. Like, was yeah. that necessary? Like, yeah. hey, leave out a couple bad features, right. you know what well, I mean? Well, that's what I mean. They, they, they don't look like the people. No, they do. They, you know who it is. I think they should get those guys on the street that do, do the uh, caricatures. So at least they're fun. So now you got Donald Trump with a peanut-sized body and a, a head nine times too no, big. I think you're on to something. Yeah, I would fun. do this if they showed, like, Michael Cohen on a wakeboard. Right. You know, yeah, or, like or, a caricature or skiing artist. Or yeah. something. Like fun, surfing. Yeah, there's a Ferris wheel in the background. He's holding candy floss, and there's a baby lion at his feet. I know you're something. making a mockery of this. Well, <laughs> all right. So, all right, here's my hypothetical. We're, we're not even there we're not yet. Even there yet. Good God. We're not there. Wow, okay. So, quite the toboggan ride you've taken me on. Drew and I were sitting around what? his. Uh, 
wedding, son's wedding, lamenting on uh, life and how it's just gone into the garbage. Oh, well, like, that's I, a cheery topic for I know, someone just starting their life We've with their... only just begun, begun to <laughs> Karen Carpenter. God, she oh. would have made a great coffee table. Oh, man. So now listen. Uh, I said, listen, uh, people, people are having huge character issues. Okay. And... You know, everyone's getting sued for bullshit, frivolous, everything. Everyone yeah, has a yeah. strong, everyone has a big time character issue. Every time yeah. somebody gets rear ended at two miles an hour, they sue, they claim yeah. they can't go to work. Uh, COVID comes around and they're like, people are filing false claims. It's the get, culture get of money. lying. It started it's when Clinton lying. looked in the camera and said, I did not right. have sex. When right. the president can right. do right. it. Right. Right, right into your face, it trickles down, and everyone goes, oh, the leader of the free world's lying to our faces. Let's all do it. Lying, no dignity. He oh, has I'm, no idea how much damage that did I, I to agree. the psyche I'm, of the world I'm, and America in I'm, general. I'm going to call my dog a service dog so I can put it yeah. on the airplane all next lies. to you. Like yeah. Everybody is not only lying, they're, they're all in it for themselves, yeah. fake Fake placards, handicap placards, so I can yeah. park in a handicap spot even yeah. I'm 28 and fucking full range of motion. Like, yeah. I, okay, it's on. Can we agree it's on? It's on. It's on. Uh, okay. Yeah. And religion is on the wane, and people are fucking horrible now. And I just, and we've accepted a lot of it. Like, a lot of just Well, I don't know if we've accepted or it's just been shoved down. Other, you're right. To uh, no, agree, we Every time I go to the airport, there's 16 dogs. And yeah, I just keep yeah. walking. I, I, saw, I got on a plane to Denver last week, and someone had a full um, a husky team, like a, sl- a whole a sled musher, team. A yeah. sled team. Oh, yeah. And they sledded right to the back. They were he, sitting in the back. She <laughs> mushed back. She <laughs> mushed. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, just like 12 dogs. And one of them had two different colored eyes. I think it was David Bowie. Wow. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Or Marilyn Manson, she but whatever. a whole eight-dog team. A whole team. Like, the what's that, the, the thing they do? The yeah, I did get a rod. The, I did a rod, yeah. Wait, wow. it was Alaska Airlines. Now oh, that my I think God. Of it. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah. All but, right. yeah, it's crazy, It's dude. on. Yeah. All right, so here's the hypothetical mm-hmm. that I said to uh, Dr. Drew. Yeah. I said, I think we're at a point in America... Where if you stop the average American and you said, I will give you $5,000 cash. And by the way, a lot of this stuff, like when you hear about these stories, you know, 48 hours, it's like, well, the man agreed to kill the pregnant girlfriend, but first he wanted $3,500. You know, like yeah. they're getting shit done for under five grand. They're getting people killed right. for like under five grand. And the government takes half of right. that when you file it on your tax return. Sure. Murdered you woman. Got a, you yeah. got 1099, the guy yeah. who killed your old lady. Be brutal. It's a write off. So would most Americans. And most could be fifty one percent. Okay, for five thousand dollars. Yeah, if they if you said to them, I'll give you five thousand cash. Ten random Americans are going to die. It has nothing to do with you. It'll never be brought back to you. They're just going to die. They'll just die in their sleep or whatever. Now they could be eighty five years old. They could be five years old. I don't know who they mm. are. I, it could be a family member of yours. Yeah. Although statistically, probably not. But just ten Americans are going to die randomly in their sleep if you take five thousand cash. Mm-hmm. But obviously, it could never be traced back to you or me or any, or anybody. They just die in their sleep. But once again, the people that die. They could be murderers, or they could be special needs kids or scholars or 17-year-olds yeah. heading for Harvard. Anybody? Yeah. yeah. Well, random, random, spin of the wheel, 330 million Americans, 10 will die, here's five grand. I think most people would take that, and that is a fucking horrible sign for our society. It's horrible. What do you think? Well, uh, you're, you're very convinced of it. You're and standing then firm. The priest yelled, you're interrupting the vows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I have to say the scary... The scary part is, I think a lot would. The decent side of me and the the, the side of me that still believes in the decency of a society has to believe no. But I, I'd say I'd go so far as to say maybe one out of ten people would do it. I don't. I don't. I can't believe that all of them would. Now, it dep- no, I don't. I'm not if you went all into of them, it, I would yeah. never say. All. I would never say all of anyone. For anything. Okay, yeah. I'm just trying to think if five out of ten Americans would agree it's to that. Possible. Well, now, you, it's you're gonna possible. Well, now, you're going to have to pull out people that are in a high tax bracket. It was like five grand. I mean, shit to me. Like, I'm not doing I wouldn't it. pull them out. You would. Those people can be sadistic. They, they, a lot of people with a lot of money, 
f- feed off power. So they wouldn't need the money, but the fact that, wait a minute, in, in a godlike way, I can have f- 10 people exterminated just by saying yes, and then well, I'll send the five grand to a charity, my it favorite could, charity. It could you know, make a wish foundation. Don't don't underplay the it rich. Could be they you. can be just as sinister as and all humans. Believe me, when it comes to that, no, I think it's an I, even I, playing I, field. I, no, sorry, I no, don't. I sorry. disagree. I disagree. I, I don't disagree think you'd run with into you evil Bond villains. <laughs> I think you'd run into people where five grand meant nothing to them. You know, they pay fifty grand a month in alimony. Like That's what I'm talking grand, about. The money doesn't mean anything. Nothing, it's the power. Go, I'm not doing it because that doesn't mean it's anything. the god yeah. complex. Yeah, it's that the be very rare occurrence. I disagree. I think I you're think, uh, underestimated. So rich, what do you think, think about all the rich people? So you we just know. think it's impoverished people that would act let's, out on this? No, no. There would be a certain amount of impoverished. Because don't forget, impoverished people sometimes are the most generous, loving, giving people you'll ever blah, meet. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah that's what right. are you, a sheep oh, now? Oh, yeah. Nah, nah, they open nah. the borders. They're doing all the work. I'm not right. talking about illegals. Listen I'm talking about me. good, just good, God fearing people there, Norman Go Rockwell. Go Trudeau. Go eat up. Go eat a piece of Chinese. Food and joke on it. I look maneuver face. I think <laughs> the poor people would tend to be a little more religious, like a poor Hispanic in this town, oh. and the religion may stop them from doing it. Listen, I'm trying to think of every rich guy I know. Every rich guy I know would pass. This would be a hard pass. Totally disagree. On, on, who do you know? I know tons of rich people. And they would take this? I think some of them would. Really? You, you said there's no detection. There's no, no way to trace it back. No, they wouldn't even want it on their conscience for five for a, for a pittance. Some That's of them what I'm would. Saying. Some of them like How to... How do you know? You ever see... Name you, names of rich guys you know who would definitely do. Like, I can't name them. I'm just saying underneath the facade... You know rich guys. Underneath the facade of every human being, there's a dark, sinister... Facade that that people would act out on if they could. All right, I'm saying I know tons and tons of people that make a ton of money, and I can't think of a one of them that would because agree you're short sighted. You're assuming. Don't pretend you know the dark <laughs> underbelly of your close rich friends, my naive little freakazoid, Seven Eleven hot dog sucking freak. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Be careful. So what do you put it Be at careful. with Americans? With Americans, Americans are good-hearted people, but they're also greedy. So I, I think it could be. Geez, I, I always try to look for the light and the positive. But if I'm being honest, I, I bet maybe twenty percent would would go for it, and I'm not even going to confine it to a to a snack bracket. It could be rich, poor, medium, priest, lawyer, doctor, teacher. Everyone has their own. We don't know each other, really. You don't know your priest. You don't even know your parents, really. Everyone has a sinister dark side. And if she can't <laughs> be traced... Everyone has a sinister dark side. They do. Side. And if you, if you can't be traced back to anything, you'd be amazed what people would do. Think about men and women if... if, if All right, so would you do it? Would I do it? Yeah. I wouldn't do it. But what about your sinister dark side? Oh, my sinister dark side would go Nagasaki on everybody. Do you no. know how many Cocoa Puffs you could buy and how many cheese doodles and how, <laughs> how many bugles? For five you could, grand? You could, for $5,000, yeah. how much... Cocoa Krispies and Snap Crackle and Pops. I couldn't. And space I couldn't sticks. in good conscience eat Hi-C. like swallow cereal, knowing that somebody oh. got knocked off. Oh, so you're yeah. the only the one food. that doesn't have the sinister. Oh, side. I've got the dark sinister. Oh, yeah. I just told you about my OJ story. Okay. In my new book, I wrote a whole story about Ron Goldman. Wait, this I, I wrote this about a year ago, just before OJ died. But my whole story is about Ron Goldman planning all these years to get revenge on OJ and he abducts him oh, really? and he bought an old warehouse and he recreated the inside of Bundy Drive uh-huh. and he captured OJ and forced OJ to recreate the murder but on his own son Wow! so that OJ would have to know the exact pain and torture that Ron Goldman went through his in, for the last 30 this years. This is very kind of Quentin Tarantino of you. Yeah. That's dark yeah. as hell. Yeah, yeah it's very good. dark. It was It's the hardest story for me to write that I've ever written. I actually didn't want to write it because it was so dark, but I had to look at it through the lens of if I was Ron Goldman and I, 
I knew or I thought highly that this individual murdered my innocent son, mm-hmm. and he was living the life of Riley all these years. Mm. So I wrote this story where through the eyes of Goldman, he exacted his revenge meticulously, uh, creatively, and to a point where he could never be caught. And that's, that's what the story's about. Powerful. It's very dark. When's it coming out? It's out. It's called oh, Se- Sex, it was, Sex Sin, and it. Satan. It's on Amazon. <clears throat> it's my new, latest book of collection of short stories. All right. So another, another question for you, Harlan. Great. I love it. What I feel do? like Nancy Drew. What do you do in this situation? Well, could you tell me the situation, please? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Oh, going to be part of the Jeez, <laughs> guy just of the goes into a sugar it. coma over there. Part of the equation. You're right. Okay. I was, uh, we're going back to the club where I oh, did God. the Netflix as I can a still smell it. <laughs> can you smell it? <laughs> it smells like it? soup plantation after they close and the janitor's got that mop with croutons in it and mm. mushroom soup. Yeah. You know, I had an invention many years ago, uh, which was a beet bracelet and an asparagus hat. Whoa. Yeah. And the beet bracelet would just be like one of those Live Strong, Lance Armstrong bracelets, but it'd be purple. Oh, and, you and, mean a beet, like the vegetable beet. Yeah. I thought you meant like it was a masturbation tool. <clears throat> it could be modified for sure. Well, you said beet bracelet. <clears throat> I don't know you. You've got that dark, sinister side none of us see behind Sounds like closed an English doors. ska band from the 80s, right? Now, have you got the beet bracelets album? It's bloody lovely. Oh, they're really hot on these ones, eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, oh, I love them. I they think they open for madness. Oh, yeah, I love them. The pl- I love them. I think they open for George Michael in more ways than one, eh? <laughs> knock, knock, wing, wing. There you go, eh? <laughs> so I had an idea because, you know, when you order beets, you would never eat beets. Harlan no. Williams would never eat beets. No. Never. You're, Not I, one no. million or years. Or asparagus. Or asparagus. No. Is there a vegetable you eat? I love corn. Oh, of um, course. That's a, that's a non-vegetable. And it's pea, a I like peas in the pod. Peas in I the like pod. I like opening peas in the pod and eating them right out of the pod. That is nice. They're really fresh and I crispy. Agree. I agree. And I like um, green beans, like the long ones you boil mm-hmm. and then put butter on. Yeah. But it's yeah. I don't eat a lot of veggies, man. They freak me out. Yeah. Too much fiber, too much green. <laughs> yeah, no, nutrients. I get it. And what food? I mean, the only other food that that makes your urine smell that I've experienced is sugar smacks. You know that cereal <laughs> po- with the with oh, yeah. the sugar bear. Yeah. <laughs> you eat like a couple of bowls of those. And when you pee, it smells like your toilet's just a giant bowl of sugar smacks. Was was? Can you imagine was eating the like voice sugar smacks? Sm- bear supposed to sound like Bing Crosby? Nah, I don't think so. I need to hear that commercial because see, here's what we would do uh, back in the day: we would just rip everyone off. They, Wasn't they that would do Yogi? An, they would do an anim- they do an animated series, and then they would just use the yeah. vo- voice of Humphrey Bogart. But you were nine, and you didn't know. But it, yeah, it's, or Jimmy it, Cagney, or yeah, yeah. yeah, it was super lazy artistically. Yeah. But the bear from the Sugar Smacks commercial would talk every once in a while. Yeah, he had I remember some being y- a frog. It wasn't no. Originally, it was a bear. Sugar Crisp. Maybe yeah, it's he, sugar, crisp. sugar crisp. Something he, with sugar. As long he, as it's got sugar, I'm he, he talked a little like Yogi, but as I think about it now, he sounded like Bing Crosby, like boo 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 boo. Oh wow! All right. I think you just lost about eighty percent of your eye. No one knows who Bing Crosby is anymore. Um, there was a comic that used to do a joke. He had oh, his I doorbell it was like Bing Bong. That was his doorbell. Right. That's not my joke. Mm. So it's Sugar Bear. Sugar Bear. He was the mascot for Sugar Crisp, which later became Golden Crisp. Oh, Sugar Crisp. Yeah, they took the mm. word sugar out of it because of all the woke stuff. And it was an emulation of a Bing Crosby or Dean Martin persona. I Dude. fucking knew it. Wow. I knew it. Do you know what was on I Judge didn't know Ito's it, but desk? I sound in my head. I haven't <laughs> thought about that since I was nine. What was on Judge Ito's desk? Um, our, no, glasses filled with sand that we call our glasses. God, this guy's That's good. 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 Yeah. Friend of yours? I yeah. Know him, yeah. We yeah need you know, to you know him? So, Do you know the dark side of him that nobody else I knows? Like when he's got the beat bracelet on and he's listening to Wham in the dark? 
the middle of the night the up on the roof. Beet bracelet. You've never eaten beets, but I love beets, and we eat a lot of beets. Okay, they've got to do something to your pee because they look. If you step no. on a beet, it looks like you stepped on the, like a turtle. They change the color of your pee. Well, there you go. But number two is where you have the problem. So wait. So if you eat a beet. And an asparagus, your piss is not only going to stink different, it's going to look different. So you're going to have red pee and smell like asparagus. It's really about the number two, which looks like you spontaneously aborted into the toilet. Really? It, it looks like... It's like a inter- placenta bomb? It looks like you're, you have internal bleeding. Whoa. And you go to bed that night and you wake up the next morning and you think you've been bleeding all night. Wow. But it's the beets. Can't it just be like a velvet cheesecake or whatever it is? I'd be nice. Wow. That's where the beet bracelet comes in. When you wake up, you're reminded. It disturbs me beets. when I hear you talking about waking up with a beet bracelet on. I just, I, all I can hear is careless whisper and maybe a bed board smacking against a drywall of a Motel 6 in Bakersfield. Everything's in Bakersfield. Well, you're the guy beating. <laughs> God. Do we find the guy's voice on the sugar? <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, what's your voice? Sugar Bear. Fine Sugar Bear. Get enough of that Sugar Bear. Sugar Crisp. That's good memory. I'm glad you remember that. I never thought about it. Till now. Till now. And that's what you do. That's what I do. You jar free. Yeah. Thoughts that yeah. Have been stuck I in stimulate my head. you. You stimulate. Your other guests just sit here they and their gums here. flap. You don't remember anything they say. I stimulate <laughs> you. You probably run home, put the beat bracelet on, and <laughs> a sugar bear talk. Yeah. All right. Let's hear him. See if it's Bing Crosby. Mm-mm. My super golden crisp cereal with eight vitamins makes this nutritious breakfast really neat. I just love that sweet crispy wheat. Don't be bashful with that box for the bear. Put the pole in the bowl. Put the pole in the bowl. That sounds very gay. That's really sugar gay. Wow. In case he bit off more than he could chew, I can't get enough of Super Golden Crisp. It's got the crunch with punch. Yeah, yeah it's Bing Crosby. Yeah, yeah, good. Right. Wow, good get, Paul. All right, now here's... Uh, <laughs> I'm a, dreaming, dreaming of a sugar crisp Christmas. Wait, does, am, am I Bowie and you're Bing I'll Crosby? I'll be Bing, all right. Okay. I played my best for him, ba rum pa pum pum ba 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 My beat bracelet in your bum. That was groundbreaking. You remember that, Chris? Yeah, that was so weird. David Bowie singing with Bing Crosby. Yeah. Do you see that? I don't think so. Oh, it's, that's when two cultures collided. Like it was an uber rock star that was the generation and an old crooner. Yeah, yeah. That was a bridge yeah. of the generation gap. Yeah, it was, you had it was your almost father's startling. Your favorite crooner yeah. and an androgynous English avant garde pop singer with husky eyes coming together yeah. in the mid 70s. They did what 70s. together? Uniting. Okay, because I didn't. If I go back and look at the video, and they're both wearing beat bracelets, I get the reference. Seventy four, seventy five. I don't. I don't remember when that was. And they yeah. sung a Christmas song. Together. Little drummer boy. Yeah, and everyone kind of flipped out. Yeah, because it. It would have. It, it's like you know. It's like when Beyonce went country or something. Everyone's like, "Oh my God, what's going on?" Yeah. Like, "Oh, she's crossed over." Nobody you know, knew how to. How to accept it. We didn't it. know how to process yeah. it. And that's what made it so brilliant. And it yeah, still this, stands out to this day because no one else had ever done it. Too, it's kind of mixing the mediums. Yeah, well, was that on Bing Crosby's show? It was like his Christmas special. And then Bowie walks in, anything but a rock star. He walks in with like a cardigan sweater. Right. And they're leaning on a piano and there's fake snow coming down outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Candles and... Here's this weird, creepy David Bowie guy with Bing Crosby, who maybe is creepy and weird in his own right. Yeah. 77. Let's watch a minute of that. It, it, Chris, yeah. you should see this, because it's, it's iconic uh, Americana. Yeah. And it's just one of those clips that uh, it sort of captured everyone's imagination. What's but, funny is right at the end when they finish, and then they, they both come and they go, oh, that's a wonderful song. Yeah. <laughs> and Bowie's like... Yes, it's really lovely. Like they have, they, they they do a little critique right at the <laughs> right end. Little, you gotta, you gotta pat, see that little pat. Wonderful little thing, isn't it? Uh-huh. <laughs> There's that doorbell. Bing bong. <laughs> Bing Crosby. Yeah, look at him. You the new butler? <laughs> what? 
It's been a long time since I've been the new anything. What's happened to uh, <laughs> Hudson? I guess he's changing. Yeah, he does that a lot, doesn't he? Um, like, where's the Ziggy Stardust stuff, oh, right? It's got a cross. Me use his piano got a cross. Piano. He's wearing a blazer. I say I haven't seen him, but come on in. Come in. It takes them a while to sing. You might want to fast oh, it forward. Does. It. Yeah, there's this well, whole I forgot little. There's, old preamble. there's this little preamble that lasts a bit too long. See, now they're just starting. A newborn king to see. Our finest gifts we bring Peace on earth Wow! There he goes. Can it be Years from now Things like, let's bring this home. I'm, I gotta beat my kids in about ten minutes, so we can just kind of wrap this up. Bum, 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 Under pressure. Right? Yeah. Freddie Mercury jumps up in the middle of them. Boom, 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 Go to the end where they do the little critique. At the end, they right at the end, they they go, oh, pretty little thing, isn't it? It's like really creepy. Boom, boom, So here we go. Can it be? It's a pretty thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, I, feel, I feel all Christmassy now. Yeah, I can I good. can yeah. I make you some eggnog or something, guy? I love nog. You do? Yeah. What about egg? Eggnog is awesome. Get the stuff in the glass bottle. It's I've never better. had it. You want to know why? Because <laughs> other adults enjoy it? <laughs> no. The, the word. I've never had eggplant or eggnog. Uh, it sounds it sounds horrible. Yeah. Like a drinking, like, a, I, I don't know what it's made of, but when they, I heard the word egg, I thought, liquefied egg, it's yellow, yeah. don't know what nog is, mm -mm. don't want egg in mm -hmm. me, don't want nog in me, uh -huh. goodbye, I'd rather <laughs> eat your Galapagos asparagus. No, yeah, you're missing out on eggnog. Is it, what's it taste like? It, it, it's sort of our version of, it's, it's the white man's horchata. Now, see, I don't know what that is. We can't explain it, but it's good. You know what I mean? Hor you know what a horchata is? Well, it sounds like a prostitute in uh, Chatsworth. How long have you been a in this? Horchata. <laughs> horchata is the Mexican <laughs> beverage. Okay, you don't have to snap at me, guy. I figured you'd know. My guy, you my guy. In, what, what, you live in California what, the Mexican beverage? They only drink one, one thing? One. They drink horchata. 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 Hydrate. What is it? Horchata. horchata. It's like a rice milk. Ooh. What, here's what I'm saying. Yeah. This is why it's our horchata. Okay. It's the white man's horchata. Because when people go, what's horchata? They go, oh, it's rice-based milk with cinnamon. And you go, and get sugar, the fuck yeah. out of here. Yeah. And then, go, Ooh. and then you take a sip and you go, oh, huh. that's not nice. bad. And okay. when you try to explain eggnog, people will go, come Ooh. on. that's No. I take a hit and you're right. in. But what's it taste like? Horchata. <laughs> Jeez. Well, what about something that it tastes egg sweet? Like you know what? It, I, I I would say eggnog tastes like a milkshake of mm. an of an undeclared flavor, Ooh. like not strawberry, not chocolate, not vanilla. Just a milk. If someone just said this is a milkshake, a sweet milkshake, very ambiguous. And I, I didn't assign it. A, yeah. a, 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 a so it's creamy, like a milkshake. It's creamy. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Wow. Yeah. Ew. It's good. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Don't like it. Just, I can't get around the name. name. It Eggnog. Name. Maybe we'll try, like, what if we called it Christmas Delight? That that yeah. I'd try. Yeah. That I would definitely try. Mountain now, Dew presents Christmas Delight. Yeah. yeah. You'd try Christmas Delight. I'd have right? Christmas Delight. I'd, I'd drink it out of Bing Crosby's eye sockets. <laughs> Did you, uh... <laughs> They showed us a picture of eggnog with fucking ice in it. You don't put fucking ice in eggnog because then it just wow, melts you're and it having gets some watery. Eggnog you know, anger, the fuck? man. Who would what? make eggnog that Dude, way? You're fucking having asshole. <laughs> egg rage and over the here. Only, eggnog Jeez. is the only time. Why are you pointing and yelling? It's the only time. God. It's the only time. Jeez. 
You're ever going to utter this phrase. Utter. I like the way you stuck utter that Utter this phrase. Okay. You'll never say this in your in a lifetime except for when eggnog is present. Okay. Where's the nutmeg? You'll yeah. never say that. You'll never utter those words unless there's eggnog in front of you. Right. And then Wait, you will say, where's the nutmeg? Does nutmeg go in eggnog? Yes. It's these two words, these weird combos. Nutmeg, eggnog. So why do you put nutmeg in the eggnog? Is the eggnog not enough? I don't know if there's a chemical reaction. I don't know if it's an emotional reaction. But something about bit. grating nutmeg over eggnog makes it taste wonderful. Okay, this is going to sound horrible. I don't really oh, know what showed, nutmeg looks like. Sorry, they showed us a picture of horchata. That's why I got angry with the... Uh, yeah, you uh, got really angry. like I'm Like sorry. eggnog anger. Yeah. Like, have you heard of road rage? Yeah. You had eggnog rage. <laughs> I had nog rage. Like, if there were elves in the room right now, yeah. you probably would have kicked the shit out of them. I'll go nog on your ass. Excuse me? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that didn't Get come out right. Get the beat bracelet. <laughs> All right. So, you'll never have eggnog. Mm-mm. But nutmeg and eggnog is awesome. But what? See, I don't know what nutmeg is now. You keep introducing... I've heard of it, but I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> I don't know. You grew up in some sort of bizarre well, what does it look castle like? in Canada. Describe what nutmeg... I don't even think you know cucumber it's a, teeth. It's a spice. <laughs> How dare you? Well, what's it look like? It Where's like, it come from? It, it, it look like little round... Um, I'm not Brazil nuts. Or, they look like a little round nut. Oh, and, wow. And you grind it. That's a nutmeg nut? It. You grate it. Well, yeah. how smart is it? <laughs> uh, give it a B yeah. minus. Okay. <laughs> that right. looks like brown cocaine to you me. You grate it mm. over the nutmeg. I mean, they ignore You're getting all mixed getting up, guy. I'm getting confused. My guy. All right. <laughs> Shall I float another theory for you? Yeah. I like the way you said float. That's kind of cool. You tell no. me what you do if you're in my case, in my position. Okay. All right. We're back to the Netflix club. Okay. Where right. you did the stinker? You did yeah. the, 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 ve- the Vegemite fist. stinker? Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. So we had uh, Leno and Jay Moore and uh, Rob Schneider and uh, TJ Miller. Who are they? Those are professional comedians. Mm-hmm. Okay. Any good? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Like eggnog, I don't know a lot of things. And uh, my sister and her husband came out for their first ever comedy show with me in it. I don't believe she's ever seen me perform stand-up. Were you nervous? No. But I had thoughts. And I was like, oh, I've never, I've never, my sister's never seen me perform. How old is she? Younger or older? She's one year older than me. Wow, that's kind of pressure. So, um, did the show. The show was great. Everyone was great. I'll be the judge. (laughs) In keeping with Corolla family tradition, there was no praise, you know, heaped after the show at the Green Room. Because my family doesn't do that. You don't do it either. I don't do it either. You never say anything nice when we wrap these shows. I always tell you how much I love you. Mm. So, but here's the interesting part. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, backstage, uh, Green Room. Okay. I'm talking to my sister. She had a good time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, pointed out a couple other comedians she enjoyed, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, then here comes uh, T.J. Miller. Oh. And he's talking to my sister. And he says, um, listen, you know, sort of, I want to find Adam. And I want to tell you this in front of Adam, in front of you, my sister. And then he comes and he just heaps praise on me. Inspirational, funniest guy. It's kind of looking at my sister a little bit. Like, this guy, this guy inspired me to get into business. This guy's amazing He's improvisational such a good talent. Actor. Such a good actor. <laughs> he goes, I just love your brother. Wow. And I, this guy's just so talented. Wow. And I just, I just want to say that. That's very and I sweet. go, okay. And I go, yeah, that's really sweet. You know, whatever. And then the, the night goes on and people go, go back. So then I talked to my sister yesterday. Oh, they're dating. Talking about my dad's not, 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 you know, doing that well and blah, blah, blah. And then at some point she goes, uh, what was up with that T.J. Miller speech? And I go, uh, I don't know. You were just complimenting me? Yeah, man. I don't buy it. Do you buy it? I go, uh, well, kind of, yeah. And she goes, I don't know. Is that just like Hollywood talk? Or yeah. wow. he, he seems nuts. I go, I go. <laughs> Well, I, 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 he was just being, I think he was just being, you know, 
complimentary. Yeah. Yeah, but what do you want? You know what I mean? I mean, obviously that was motivated by something. Like, right. like how Hollywood right. works. Yeah. You just get up there and BS, and then you, you get something in return. Yeah. I go, well, I don't run Netflix. I, I don't have any jobs for T.J. Miller. I just... Uh, Did you have I your beef bracelet of, I on? I kind of felt that. I think he was just... I think he felt that way. Weird. Oh, yeah. man, I don't know. I don't know what's up with that wow, guy. Wow, she's a I don't, stoop. I, I don't trust him. And I'm like, I know he was giving me a compliment, but yeah. you could trust him. Like, I, I think this shouldn't bother you that much. Mm. And then I then I start thinking, oh, now mm-hmm. I'm, I'm flashing back to my mom and my mm-hmm. grandma yelling totally. about Bon Jovi and stuff. Like, like, why do we have to undo this thing? And then I was in a weird position because I was defending the person that was complimenting me, <laughs> going, I, I don't, I was going, like, a TJ can be a little weird, but I, I think he was sincere. I think he meant it. I don't know, man. Wow. I don't that's trust so that guy. Weird. And I was like, that's a weird thing to get into a week down the road. Yeah. But then I realized that's how we roll. Well, what's interesting, too, is your sister is looking out from the inside in objectively. From the inside From in. the outside in. Oh, the outside in. And to for her to put that kind of take on it, to for the layperson, I don't know how sincere TJ was or not. He seems like a sincere guy to me, but that, that is odd that that's what she picked up on. Well, it's an interesting deconstruction because yeah. it's a sort of like, look, we can remove you being actually talented from the equation. Now, what was he up to? You right. Know what I mean? And I was like, I think he was just complimenting me is yeah. what, he was, what he was doing. He could have meant it. He yeah. He could have meant it. Was it over complimentary or was it sort of like, like was it, did it become too much where you it got T- uncomfortable? It was, it was TJ Miller. So he's a little yeah. out there. And it was very, it was over the top. And, it, it, yeah. and she could have been reacting to that. Maybe, was he doing a bit, do you think? Like, was it one of those kind of comedy green room kind of, let's kind of improvise? Because he loves to improvise. He's a good improviser. No, he was just going, I think I'm going to take this opportunity to really heap some praise. And wow. I'll do it in front of a witness. And that'll feel good. Is he going to get anything out of this from you? I got him a watch. Nice. What kind? A Rolex Submariner. Stainless steel. <laughs> Smart kid, T.J. Miller. I've always thought now, you were really great, water by the way. I really <laughs> love water what you Water resistant do. isn't the same as waterproof, and I told him. Speaking that. of proof, but I, I think you've watch. proven yourself <laughs> to the want? comedy community <laughs> over and over, just the way you come in and to, you know just own it. And I've always thought you were one of the funniest, funniest guys. What size like, is your wrist? Uh, how, how big is a beep bracelet? <laughs> oh, so you have a medium? Yeah, there. yeah. But okay, just great. Going, I love, going. I love the way you, your mind works, the way mm-hmm. you craft a joke. You like I a mean, leather band or stainless steel band, just hypothetically? Titanium seems to be what works for me, but for just the way you put together your routines, they flow effortlessly, like water uh-huh. cascading down the side of a mountain with crystal clear you purity. stainless steel guy or brushed aluminum guy? Brushed aluminum with little diamonds on the side, and the way you <laughs> segue into your other bits mm-hmm. and... It just makes Seinfeld look like he showed up on Amateur Night. Do you like night. Chronograph? Do you do I much really track? Do. do you I do really track do. days? Do you need to time things? I really like that. I kind of, speaking of time, <clears throat> I lose my sense of time when I watch you on stage oh, you doing a, comedy. It's just so you like, don't have a watch. It's like you transcend me into another place where so I can no watch, watch you all night. Uh-huh. I don't have a, no, I don't have a watch. Why do you ask? You battery guy or self-winding guy? I'll take both, if you don't mind. Because you are great, just the uh-huh. way you, you, I don't even know where you come up with your topics, like the mm. obscurity, but mm. the relevance that you weave your tapestry of, of comedy. Get it's your just, address off the air, Yes, Harlan. Yes, okay. Yeah, um, great. I mean, you're in L.A. County yeah, or yeah, proper? Yeah, if you could courier it, that would be... FedEx, I'd like to get it Sorry, tomorrow. You're saying I cut you off your just the, w- the way you kind of step all over Richard Pryor and George Carlin's throats when you mm. walk up there. It's almost like I pitch you with comedy golf shoes on, and you're just putting mm-hmm. their mouths on the edge of a curb so and you, stomping on their necks. Do you do a lot necks. of water sports? Would it be I do a jet a, ski. Would the, I've always the, wanted a. You know, there is a difference between water-resistant and waterproof. I yes, see. yes. Okay. Uh, but I'll, I'll take a dry land one and an underwater one. Mm-hmm. I love moray eels. I mm. love sea cucumbers. I'll, you know how I like Edo, to look at the Edo time underwater. You love his time pieces? Oh. You got a little Edo love coming your way, brother. Are you sending me a... 
That's just thanks for the compliments. I'll get your address off the air. Thanks, thanks bro. buddy. Thanks. I felt good. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> That's really nice of you. Yeah, really nice. it just it just so came sweet. out, just spilled out yeah. of me. I don't know where. It, <laughs> unbelievable nice moment there. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I found myself in a bizarre position of trying to defend T.J. <laughs> Miller for for complimenting me. A it was week weird. later? Well, wait, a it's, I'm, later. I'm a little suspect of your sister now. Mm. Oh, yeah. In a way, sort of deflecting your talent. Ah. Like, I, don't, I didn't take it so much as T.J. building you up as I take it as your sister's going, what are you talking about? My brother's not that good. It she, felt more like that. You better no. have a, you better take a watch from your sister. I'm taking a watch. <laughs> yeah. Stealing a watch. What's with the sister not showing support? Ah, she thought TJ was dubious. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Right. What's your sister do? Um, she runs the Laugh Factory. <laughs> she does? <laughs> <No>. Ah! <laughs> She does hair. She she does hair. Okay, so she's yeah. around heads. Because I'm going to say she comedy. seems introspective. She mm. seems so she's around heads. So, so she, knows yeah, she knows thoughts. Yeah. She knows thoughts. When you're working with heads, you get to know. You get to thoughts. know the thoughts. Yeah. You're right near that. You're touching the brain. There's only a little plate of bone separating you from actually <laughs> touching the brain. Um, good to know. Yeah. We'll take a quick break. <laughs> Jeez. We'll do some news, and we'll do that right after this. Meter Father's Day just around the corner, and I know the perfect gift that dad, well, he didn't even know he needed it. I'm talking about Meter. Meter is a sleek, smart meat thermometer that guarantees the perfect cook for every time you put something on. It gives you a countdown so you'll know exactly when the food is ready and when it's time to chow down. Super simple, super easy perfect results, whether it's grilling steaks, roasting a chicken, or smoking a brisket, meter will make sure the meal comes out perfectly. Dad will never undercook or overcook a meal again. And uh, you just get rid of that uh, food delivery app because he'll have meter. I use this thing. It's great. It'll free you up. You can go on a beer run. You can go back in the house. You don't have to stand over the grill or whatever you're cooking. And however you're cooking, you can use meter. It's the perfect gift, and it's a great cooking tool for dad, especially for a, a dad who likes barbecuing and cooking. Level up that barbecue game with Meter, right, Dawson? Shop now on Meter.com for Father's Day specials, including the newest products. Barbecue season is coming up. Get dad grilling and shop at M-E-A-T-E-R.com. Morgan and Morgan, if you're in an accident, not calling a lawyer means you could be leaving money on the table. If you're ever injured, check out Morgan and Morgan, America's largest injury law firm, over 100 offices nationwide and more than a thousand lawyers, more than $20 billion recovered for over 500,000 clients. Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you your full and fair compensation. Writing six books, hey, that's me. That's hard. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan, well, that's easy. It is Morgan & Morgan. Am I right, Dawson? If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com slash Adam or dial pound law, pound 529 from your cell. That's F-O-R-ThePeople.com slash Adam or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. The Adam Carolla Show presents Harland Williams' birthday cocktail party for November 14th. Let's see who's invited. We welcome the former King of England, Scotland, and Ireland, William III. The inventor of the first commercial steamboat, Robert Fulton. Let's welcome French Impressionist painter, Claude Monet. The American politician who claimed communists have infiltrated the U.S. government, Joseph McCarthy. Buckwheat Zydeco is here. So is Prince Charles. From Styx, James J.Y. Young. And the list goes on and on with Stephen Bishop, Pink Floyd's audio engineer, James Guthrie, Condoleezza Rice, Patrick Warburton, Travis Barker is here, and here to tell the story of a lovely lady, the creator of the Brady Bunch, Sherwood Schwartz. Harland Williams is on the Adam Carolla Show. All right, but don't do that, right? All right, sorry. Harlan Williams here. 
Can't get enough of that sugar crisp. Ba, ba, ba. Sugar crisp. Rump a pum pum. But a bit of that's okay. You're singing it like you had a stroke now. Oh, and some phlegm. God. <laughs> All right, let's do a little news. Yeah. Let's do some news. All right, so Tyrese. Tyrese. Ty Always getting into Reese. trouble, that Isn't guy. He? Yeah, there's always something going on with Tyrese. Is he the model, the bald model yeah. guy? Really well, good he looking. He was a model, but he's a singer too, Fast and Furious. No, that's a different black man. Oh, there is another. Oh. You just did a black simile. I did? Yeah, that's where you swap. I don't out even two play the men. drums. This is a black simile. That's wow. where you mistake Finally. one black guy for another black guy. Oh. Tyson. Tyson Beckford. is the model. I mean, okay. Let's start with Ty as well. Yeah. Don't let him off the hook. All He's right. a racist. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Slammed. That's right. Black simile. Hey, what do they call Canada? Oh, the Great White Way. Yeah. White. What do they call those sharks in the water? <laughs> the Great, great white, white Sharks. sharks. Right. Except for yeah. I don't come from a pod of Great White Sharks. Yeah. Come. From the great white way. The, right way. the, the ways of the north. white man. Yes. All right, sorry, where were we? Oh, so, <laughs> so Tyrese was on uh, The Breakfast Club not that long ago, and he was saying some stuff about a guy um, whose last name's uh, Barber. But anyway, so he, this, guy, this Barber guy, he's suing Tyrese for defamation, mm -hmm. but he can't serve him. He, he's trying to serve him. So Tyrese was performing in Georgia at a concert, uh, at his concert, and he's singing, and a security guard comes up and whispers something in his ear, and then Tyrus just, while singing, just is escorted off the stage, says bye, and it was because he was getting served, and he was trying to avoid getting served. So all these concert guards are like, why the concert end early? We have right. a video of it. We could yeah. put it up here, but mm -hmm. you, can wa you can watch him as he just sings his way off the stage. He's right in the middle, the little drummer boy. Whoa. Right in the middle. All right, the security. Oh, but that's his security that came up, though. Well, a security guard, but oh, I mean, okay. it, he seemed to have known. He whispered something in his ear, and he's like, okay, got to go. And it was because I, I, I think the security guy the should have let them finish the concert, and then as soon as it ended, ran interference. But all right, we'll watch it, sir. Why would his own security guard serve him, though? That doesn't no, make sense. No, he didn't sense. serve him. He said someone's here to serve him. Right. I oh. think he was warned. I think he was warned. Come on, Harlan. But don't you have to actually like you wouldn't you wouldn't go, Oh, someone's here to serve me. I think I'll have my concert walk into the wings of the stage and get served. That they, they unless they walk right up to you, you can't be served. You don't go out of your way to walk to them. I think maybe the guy was there. I don't know, but we'll Something's watch it. Something's fishy, okay. We'll watch it. Tyrese walked off stage. Okay. Here, so yeah, so He's singing. Um, is there sound to this? There should be. Yeah. Oh, he's. Well, let's hear the. Put the. We always get confused with the sound part of the video, and I don't know why that is. Oh, that tab's muted, Byron. Do we no, not escape? And then yeah, right click that. I'd mute it if it's muted. Do we not anticipate oh, this, even though it happens? <laughs> 86 yeah, we just the watched time. the Bing Crosby thing with full sound. Uh, yeah. Well, that's a good right. point. Consistent. Yeah. 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 So put if if there is sound, then we should hear the sound because otherwise it's is this at the Hollywood Bowl? Pie. It's in Georgia. It's a yeah. it's a venue in Georgia, but uh, it, it it's an amphitheater, and he's walking up <laughs> past the up back to the behind the audience. I don't know if with the sound matters. You can't Doesn't. really see it. Anyways. I would like to hear, hear him. It. I would like to hear him sing off stage. But it's weird there's no sound, because you can't film anything without sound anymore, can you? I don't know. It's a real mystery. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway. No sound. But interesting ways that people are getting served these days. Yeah, Tyrese is always getting into some kind of trouble. There's always somebody serving him with papers. There's always, there's always an issue. Why? Is he a rap singer or something? Who is he? He's a model. Oh. <laughs> you just no, did a black in cinnamon. Fast, he's in Fast and Furious. Come on. He is? Are you going to tell me you've never seen the Fast and Furious I have, franchise? but I can't remember who he is. Like this video, that could be that could be Kenny G. This is a this is more blurry than a Bigfoot oh. video. How do we get the sound? Stop it. All right, stop. <laughs> stop it. How do we get the sound? I'm curious. So I put it up in the soundboard, but I forgot to press the unmute button. Whoa. I am a fool. Well, I apologize. There Dawson's goes that Christmas bonus. A lot. All right, here we go. We'll play it with the sound. Oh. I've 
inside. How are you gonna act like that? Is this, how are you gonna act like that? He's leaving. So yeah, now he's going off to the side of the stage. He's still singing. I love a. Uh, he's walking out of the amphitheater. Yeah, going off. The <laughs> God bless cordless mics. He's no, singing no. from the jail cell oh, while he's getting right. manhandled. <laughs> he's at the desk of the Ramada Inn. Yeah. Yeah. I always love it. All right. I like the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the people I'm most amused with is whoever the backup singers and the drummer is when shit goes down and they have yeah. no idea what's going on. And they just yeah. keep playing. Like you're, just, you're playing yeah. the drums. You see security. Like yeah. You're behind the drum kit. Yeah. You've done a thousand shows with Tyrese. And all of a sudden, you see a security guy walk out on stage. You're like, okay, that's not part yeah. of the act, but all right. Then he starts whispering something, and you're like, what's he saying? There's a stalker here or something? And the next thing you know, Tyrese just starts walking off stage, something he's never done before, and he continues to sing, and now you're just behind the drum kit. Yeah. He's probably still playing that yeah, guy. Yeah. Like, you can't stop. Well, and Tyrese is your boss, so you can't just, the backup singers can't just take their own cue and stop. Right. So it's like, they just keep going with the show. They don't know what he's up to. It must go on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wild. All right. Uh, let's see. Car picture. What was that? The yearbook. What's the, oh, 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 my name's spelling. Oh, okay. Good to know. <laughs> keep going. All right. Sorry. So... Um, these kids uh, were taking a field trip to La Brea Tar Pits, oh. Oh, mm -hmm. these high school students, and eight of them were taken to the hospital after they ingested cannabis edibles mm. and felt acutely ill. It's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. By yes. the way, I love the La Brea Tar Pits. I, just last week, I got up at about six in the morning, just as the sun was rising, and I go fly fishing for woolly mammoth down there. <laughs> oh, do you? Oh, I fillet them right on the shore and early. sizzle them up. Yeah, mm -hmm. just as the sun's coming up. Oh, mammoth fillets. Oh. Yeah. It takes a while to reel them in. That tar is very viscous. Right. It's thick. That's the sport. What it, test line are you using? I'm using about a 32-ton uh, woolly mammoth uh, test dry line. line, yeah. Oh, okay, dry line. Yeah, right, you, so you tie, tie a, a bale of hay on the end of it and toss it Are you it doing up. lures or you do bait? or? It's a, a bale, bale of hay. Oh, I, bale. I tie on a bale of hay. The mammoths go nuts for it. Because uh -huh. it's the first time. They, to them, that's like processed food because they, they just eat raw vegetation off the ground, off the trees but when you bail it up and compress it oh, mm. that's mm. a fast food for them I can't mm. that. and yeah. they can fight these guys took me uh seven hours to really have like a, your first mate gaffing him on board or no you just pull him right into the shore and uh, you get a winch you tie it to the back of your jeep and uh, uh -huh. once you get him right well if you're gonna laugh maybe this is the fishing no, story no, for sorry me. he did right, that sorry well, he disrespected you but uh yeah if you ever want to come fly fishing for mammoth down at the la brea tar pits with me so yeah. uh, saber tooth uh, tiger season opens in three weeks oh yeah okay. are you uh, down gotta get my license uh you know i might start with some wolves you know just uh, smaller great. game yeah. you know just kind of um, ease into it you know? pug, I got, I'm, I'm, I'm raising some pugs in the garage so they love pug puppies they're the best bait you'll probably oh, live you do a live bait live bait you just oh, with the put a pug put a yeah. little bit pug puppy they, i'll they, start with a wolf maybe yeah. i'll make my way up to saber tooth a, cat yeah, yeah, and then we'll go woolly man. Okay, dude, I hear you. Yeah, it's okay. a process, but you'll yeah. love it. Okay. Yeah. I'll um, I'll bring the Budweiser. I got a, a taxidermist working on a uh, four-ton uh, woolly right now. Going to really? hang it over the fireplace. Going to mount Imagine it. Imagine they got to charge for that. Right? Oh, God, it's not cheap. But, uh, you know, when you're dedicated to a sport, mm -hmm. you, uh, you go all in, guy. Yeah. My guy. Yeah. That's what we love about you, Harlan. That's Focus. what I love about you, my guy. <laughs> Okay. What else happened? Um, uh, so, th in the uh, Bay Area, oh. these are now targeting high-powered Tesla and other EV charging stations and stealing the heavy cable. So We've have, this coming. Have you seen it's, this? It's over. It's it's done. There, we're <laughs> done with our society. So well, it looks like we're done with the catalytic converters, and we're going after the. the we're going EV after chargers. anything with copper in it. So yeah, just clipping all the wires. Yeah, but the mistake they they're making is now they're messing. With a guy that's reinventing humankind. 
<laughs> They're messing with a guy who's going to get us to Mars that's drilling underground, that has Skylink, that's inventing a brain chip, has yeah, robots right. on the way. You think a little cable is going to shut him down? He'll come back with a cable that's impenetrable, uncuttable. He'll come back with a cable that if they even touch it, they'll turn into like fetuses. Yeah, or something. He's capable of that. That looks like great sushi, by the way. Is that Tesla's <laughs> was, new sushi? It looks like a sushi roll. Oh, that's, that's definitely a yeah. dragon roll. My mm. feeling is... Is that tempura I see in there? That's um, probably what they're going after. It's probably Japanese people cutting these cables. You know what it's I They're full of sushi. I don't really understand... All any society would have to do is the opposite of whatever San Francisco has done in the last decade in yeah. order to have a good society. Yeah, you're like, right. It's the weirdest. It's the weirdest thing that there is no connection between your fucking horrible policies and running your city into yeah. the ground. And my mom, God rest her soul would vote Democrat and whoever was in charge of San Francisco for the next thousand years. And there's never an element of like, you do understand it's a shit show because these people are running your city into the ground. Why not? Why not a little alteration? A little deviation. Like, maybe just go a little different direction. Maybe but, someone else has some other ideas. By other the way, is that a Holocaust survivor that's cutting that cable? What's on his hand he, there? He's that got his like coordinates, a, like, tattooed on top of his hands. Oh, I thought the, that was one of those one Auschwitz numbers. There is one In-N-Out burger in history that is yeah. closed, and that's the one in Oakland. Yeah. Perhaps we could change direction just a little bit. Yeah. Here. There's... No other civilized yeah. culture has this problem except for you. Yeah. Maybe some of the decision makers are, are making decisions that are pushing them the wrong direction. Yeah. Could that, is it a possibility? That's oh, yeah. all I'm saying. Could we discuss this yeah. for a second? Or we just keep going? No, I think it needs to be discussed. They're running it into the ground. Yes. It's a beautiful, by the way, I hate the term the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. Isn't every place an area? Can we lose it the area thing? Area. Every right. piece of geography on the planet is an area. That's right. right. The corner in my basement is an area. Stop nothing. with the Bay Area. Yeah. <laughs> but right. it's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful area. Mm-hmm. And uh, they've driven it into the ground. I used to do stand-up comedy up there like 15, 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. I'd go up, walk the streets, embrace the culture, and embrace the community. And now it looks like a, like a Stephen King creep show special. And businesses are pulling out, commercial real Everything's estate's gone. tanking, everyone's up. Okay, whatever that is, yeah. that, here's what I never understand. Who's running what is San Francisco? Well, it's one of the most progressively governed places in the world. Okay, well then maybe that's not a great way to govern. How about regressively? How about yes. that? It's yes. a better word. All right, let's do one more. Wow. All right, so Sorry. did you see this uh, Harrison Butker speech? There's a uh, oh, very speech. controversial. <laughs> oh, very People controversial. Are very, very upset, upset that he's talking about raising kids and God oh. and speaking in front of. And by the way, who's this? He's in front of a so, Christian university. He's the Kansas City Chiefs kicker, and he did okay. a commencement speech for a. Uh, for Benedictine College, it's a small Catholic school. In I Kansas. love their eggs, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah. eat that egg because there's no egg in the word, I guess. Well, like eggs Benedict. Benedict. Oh. Oh, yeah, so like Benedict. It. Yeah, yeah. I won't eat that. It oh, sounds no. like a detective. Send in egg Benedict. We found a corpse <laughs> and Corporal Fusdale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you want to hear some of it? Yeah, oh, yeah. I, oh, no, you know what I love. <laughs> I love that we're now living in a society <laughs> where you just talk about God, kids, family, a uh, boy's a gr- boy and a girl's a girl, and woman raising kids, yeah. and, and all of a sudden people are outraged. It's blasphemy. Well, l- yeah. Listen, you retards. That's why this is turning into a crumbling piece of shit because we abandon all this stuff, you fucking retards. But here we go. Ladies present today. Congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. You should be oh, proud of all that you super, have achieved to this point in your young lives. I want to speak directly I, you to know, you we briefly, never know. because I think it is you, what is that? the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. How many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage just listen to it. and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career? Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, <laughs> but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage. And Are those lamps? Bring All right, hold on. Yeah, hold Byron, on. did a, you know this is a, a cook, cook documentary? This is the first to say 
I'm just, her life truly started. All right, we got to do this again. But Byron, her do you think this is... What's with the lamp? Something he, he found it really quick. Like, he, maybe didn't, he didn't have a chance to reveal. That's my bad. I should have sent him one. Um, okay. All right. All right, well, now well, anyway. we'll close our eyes and listen to it that doesn't have a bunch of... Um, Supercuts to Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> Supercuts to Handmaid's Tale. Oh, that's what they were. I thought Supercuts. it was a lamp somebody shop. On the internet, somebody on the internet made oh. yeah, fun you, of it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's I wouldn't the mind one. They look good. what I'm saying. But all right. Well, like, now we got to hear it again. Okay, but we have to close our eyes or play the audio. There, there For we the go. ladies present today, congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. You should be proud of all that you have achieved to this point in your young lives. I want to speak directly to you briefly because I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. How many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career. Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel, would be the first to say that her life truly started when she began living her vocation as a wife and as a mother. I'm on this stage today and able to be the man I am because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. I am beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me, but it cannot be overstated that all of my success is made possible because a girl I met in band class back in middle school. It's getting, it's getting okay. emotional now. All right, with the point is, the is God wow. forbid a religious guy talk to a religious group and talk about shit that's right. in the Bible so for few 2,000 years. And everyone's fucking got their panties in a bunch, which is insane. But go ahead. Okay, so there, there are a few things. First off, um, I was listening to some like a PR person talking about if, this, if he will get canceled. And she said no, because one, they didn't boo him. And mm-hmm. so it was obviously being accepted in, in that environment. Mm-hmm. Two, the Chiefs have not said anything about it. Mm-hmm. So they might, they probably have his back. The NFL said the something. The NFL has distanced himself. So what? Uh, the, the NFL, NFL said, is filled with wife beaters who take knees during the national anthem, which is completely well, and utterly fine. They do not comment on that. But well, uh, a, some this, religious guy talk about his beliefs. Yeah. So senior vice president Jonathan Bean, the league's chief diversity and inclusion Uh-oh. officer, has said, "Quote." Harrison Butker gave a speech in his personal capacity. His views are not those of the NFL as an organization. The NFL is steadfast in our commitment yeah, to inclusion. Yeah, we hate family. Which only makes our league stronger. No, it doesn't, you fucking pussy. So NFL is distancing themselves. Yeah, of from course. It, the They're fucking not. cowards At who want moment. to hammer checks and make money and don't give a fuck about anything. Why does anyone have to say anything? Why, why does the NFL have to release a statement? We're all individual entities with a free <laughs> voice and supposedly right. a free country. Why do they even have to change? chime in. They don't. He's talking to a Christian college and he's giving a speech. Right. You don't have to condone it or deny <laughs> it or embrace it. You don't need anything. Yeah. Shut the fuck That's up. That's like what I'm saying. I right. agree. It's so ridiculous. And <laughs> and when you say everybody's up in arms, I don't think it is everyone. No I, think, a fuck I think anymore. there's a little tiny corner of society that plans and perpetrates all this crap. Yes. I yes. don't think most people, 99% of people don't care. They're, they're yes. happy with with other people's opinions, but there's a little box of people that are just troublemakers yes. and stir the yes. hornet's nest, and they're the ones that, that light the fire under all this stuff. 100%, and the only answer to any of these people, shut the fuck up and suck my dick. There's no wow. more apologizing. Yeah, crack out no the eggnog. <laughs> wow. and, and listen, NFL, worry about your own problems with domestic abuse and concussion protocols, you fucking hypocrite pussies, and shut your mouth. What's this fucking retard's name? Bean? Uh, Jonathan Bean. Jonathan Bean, how about you shut the fuck up? It's called the off-season. Take a break. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice. Uh, Power Harlan slam, Williams, buddy. everybody. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you. Check out shows. my podcast, The Harland Highway podcast on mm-hmm. YouTube, and you're coming on again soon. I love We're it. We're going to have a I nutmeg may be bringing for you. you a little gift. Too. Oh, TikTok. TikTok. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I will say it's high time I brought you a gift, Harlan. Wow. Okay. As long as it's not asparagus, I'm down. <laughs> I do got to take a piss, so let's work that out. Good night, Nelly Furtado. <laughs> Michael Gurley and Phil Levitt are coming in for my favorite band, Dada, and we'll do that right after this. Just thrive. Life can be overwhelming, and it's not just your mind that suffers. Stress messes with your digestive system and your immune system, too. Just calm. The breakthrough 
new stress-busting formula from Just Thrive exclusive mood-lifting blend is clinically proven to help you relax and breathe easier in as little as four weeks. And I love the award-winning Just Thrive probiotic. Um, I take it every day and it makes a difference. Um, I love the couple that started this company. They're passionate about their product. I've spoken to them about it. Um, this is a labor of love for them. Uh, Just Drive's a spore-based probiotic with 1,000 times better survivability than most probiotics. Banishes bloat and constipation in your gut so you can produce serotonin. That's your happy hormone. Plus, it supports better sleep. I take it. You should take it, too. Just Thrive. All, by the way, with a money-back guarantee. Right, Dawson? Right now, when you go to JustThriveHealth.com and use promo code ADAM, you can get 20% off a 90-day bottle of Just Thrive Probiotic and Just Calm. That's like getting a month for free. And a portion of every purchase goes to Vitamin Angels, a nonprofit organization that saves the lives of millions of children and moms-to-be around the world by ensuring they get the vitamins and minerals they need to stay healthy and strong. To learn more about this groundbreaking company, don't miss Adam's interview with Tina Anderson, founder of Just Thrive. Take control today with Just Thrive. Oh, Riley, Auto Parts. Well, they're in the business of keeping your car on the road friendly, helpful service, and the parts people with the knowledge who know how to do maintenance and repair. It's so funny. I was just driving up in my old neighborhood the other day on Foothill Boulevard, and I saw the old O'Reilly I always used to go to when I lived in the neighborhood, and I was wrenching on my own car because I had to. I couldn't afford a lease. I had to fix my own car. So they've got thousands of parts and accessories in stock, either in store or online. You never have to worry. If you're in a jam, they got your part. The team at O'Reilly Auto Parts can test your battery for free in or out of your car, which is very helpful. And if it needs to be replaced, they'll help you find the right one for your vehicle. Need your windshield wipers replaced, the brake light fixed, or a quick service? They'll help you find the right part, or they'll point you to the nearest local repair shop for help. Whether you're an auto aficionado or novice, O'Reilly employers are knowledgeable, helpful, and friendly. They're the professional parts people. So stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today or visit O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. That's O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. Back on tour for the first time in a long time. Donna, return to the stage. Michael Gurley, Joey Callio, and Phil Levin. I just crashed my car again. Now I'm going to Disneyland. Donna, return to Disneyland U.S. tour. I'm going to Disneyland. Donna. Los Angeles, Minneapolis, Boston, Cleveland, Dallas, Seattle, St. Louis, Chicago, Denver, New York City, and more. Donna. The Return to Disneyland Tour. Celebrating 30 years of Donna. Donna. Get your tickets now at DonnaForever.com. And here they are, Michael and Phil in studio. Hi, Adam. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. That was a nice promo. By I way. know. Dawson. That. Dawson killed, killed, it. killed it, man. Dawson, that was incredible. Hey. Yeah. I was, uh, God, I guess I was driving my pickup truck around North Hollywood in 88 or something, and I was listening to K-Rock, and I heard Dada, and I was like, oh, this is a great band. Thank you. This was immediately was my thought, but I'm trying to think what year it was, was 92. that. 92. Oh, was it later? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, I thought it was earlier. I guess I, 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 every memory I have is what apartment I lived in, and I had myself <laughs> in the wrong apartment. Do you that's guys remember? Well, when you're in LA, that's how it is. It's like, okay, yeah, that year I was in Silver Lake. Then I moved to Van Nuys for a yeah. Week. Oh, that's when I. Oh, I had my yeah, Ralph, my asshole roommate. Yeah, yeah that's oh, that apartment, <laughs> that house, that thing, that place. Yeah. Like then. Then you get older, hopefully you stay in one place for a little right. a little while. But I, I remember just going, um, I can't play music. I have no ability, but my ability is to understand good music. And I go, oh, these guys are really, really good. And that's all 
that's about about all I got out of Dada. Excellent, <laughs> thanks, Adam. But you did your job, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I always uh, and I didn't even know you guys were a trio. It sounded mm-hmm. like more, sounded bigger. You know, we I think we always I always loved the power trios. You know, Cream and I guess you can call the the police a power a trio. Sure. That yeah. was one of I think favorite George bands. Thorogood was. Yeah, that's a power trio. Was a power trio. I mean, I guess you can call Rush a power trio. Yeah, yeah for they're sure. A trio yeah, and they're powerful. Yeah, yeah, and Green Day after yeah, that. Great. You know, like maybe there is something about the trio that you know I. I always think to myself, well, that's not enough guys. But then I <laughs> name all these trios and I love their music. So Jimmy maybe Hendrix. maybe there is something there. Yeah. Yeah. Hendrix, yeah right. There's I think there's a little bit left undone. You know, you don't have that keyboard guy or the extra guitar player. And there's a little bit more space for each instrument to stand you out. You know what I love I'm about hopefully. it the most? Hmm. I love about it the, the setup as the drummer. Because now you have the two front guys on the wings. So mm-hmm. I have the middle. It's clear. Ah. So I don't have to look at some guy's ass all he night. He likes being yeah. in the middle. You know? Because yeah. if you, you're playing with a front man and he's standing right in front of you as the drummer, then all you do is look at his ass all night. I'm not into that. Yeah, I agree. It's Even a lot of ass really crack. nice ass. Well, it's back sack <laughs> and ass crack. Right. <laughs> Right, it's both. Yeah. Wait, what's back sack? <laughs> uh, oh. It's the back side of the scrotum. <laughs> okay. I'm it's learning a, stuff here. Yeah, today. it's ass I'm crack learning. and back sack, depending on how oh, high I the get jeans are riding. You know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Got it. Uh, so I always thought I always thought you were just a great guitar player. I just love wow. love your licks, and I've always loved it. And I don't know if. First off, who influenced you when you were starting out and wanting to sound like? Well, I mean, the Beatles were my first band that I loved. Uh, obviously, when I was four years old, um, I saw them on the Ed Sullivan Show. And and that was just, I loved that sound of music, and I loved their songs. But as a guitar player, the first guitar player I ever really got into was B.B. King, because my dad bought the B.B. King you know, live at whatever prison it was. And uh, then he took me to a B.B. King concert when I was 11. Mike, we got to get you out to see a real, a real show at the Circle right. Star Theater in San Francisco. Wow. And uh, then I started learning just a couple of licks. And then I got into, you know, Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck and Hendrix and all those guys. You get a little bit older. Hendrix was really strange to me when I was 12. I didn't, I didn't get it. Like, it was like geometry. I couldn't, my mind, couldn't get my mind around it. But then when I turned like 16 and you hear Hendrix, it's like a whole different story. So a lot of the classic guys, you know. Yeah, so let's try to figure this out, and and don't be modest. But people, like, when I hear you play, and, you know, you hear all these great players, like you mentioned, Jeff Beck and guys like that, Jimmy Page and stuff, but I I think, oh, I think Michael could do whatever it is they're, they're doing. And, but, but I'll take the pressure off you. You know, Thank someone you. would go, well, Adam Carolla, what do you do? Well... I'm going to be at McGooby's Joke House uh, <laughs> doing four shows, right? And then they go, okay. And then they go, well, now who's really famous like right now? Who's a hot comedian? Like, John Mulaney. You go, okay, John Mulaney. And then they've said to me, would you go out on stage with John Mulaney and, and do an improv riff and see who, who landed on their feet? And I'd go, absolutely. I would do that. I don't begrudge him anything, but I also would, I would go out there and do it. And if they said... Well, John Mulaney's going to do 15 minutes, and then you're going to do 15 minutes. Would you like to go after him? I'd go, I'll do it. Sure. I'm not saying I'm better than he is, but I, I'll do it. Like I, I, I would feel... never want to follow Jeff Beck <laughs> or Steve right, Ray Vaughan saying... or Jimmy Page. I would, I would run. No, I would be outside the building. You don't, crying. you don't see no. what you can do and hear these guys and go, I could do that. Well, I like what I do. I've learned over the years to appreciate what I've accomplished. And as many musicians and artists like yourself, you, you want to look at the greats and see if you can, you know, match up a little bit. Um, so I, I've learned to appreciate what I do, and especially when we're going on a tour again. I haven't heard these songs in a little while, and they, they kind of stand up to the test of time. It's like, oh, I guess we did okay, you know? But yeah. I, I would, no, I would not want to get on a stage after Jeff Beck. However, I would love to, you know, play with, he's not with us anymore, but I would have loved to play with him. I did get a chance... Who was it? Rick Derringer. Yeah. In San, remember Rick Derringer? Rock and Come Roll on. Hoochie. Was that Rock and Roll yes, Hoochie Yes, very good. He came on Lord stage. Lottie Mama, light my fuse. That yeah. was like the rock and it's rolling. Is yeah. the, you know, Lottie he, Mama. He came on stage in San Francisco at Slim's. He was a little lit. Yeah, he's, he's uh, you know straight now. He doesn't uh, do that stuff anymore. But 
he was pretty lit, and I was a little nervous. I, I saw this guy, Day on the Green, in 1978, you know, playing in front of 50,000 people, and I was, but uh, I kind of held my ground. And yeah. uh, it was, that was a kind of cool experience. He could play with anybody. He could, I he's agree. Being totally, <laughs> he's being he modest. Play, I, I played with this guy a lot. He could play with anybody. And I played with a lot of other people, too. He, he's a special guitar player. And this guy can play with anybody. He, in fact, he got to play with Sting on about four songs that were oh, sound check when, when Vinnie Caliuta did not show up on time. Yeah, it's a, it, with, with drummers, though, you know, drum, it's such a macho world of drummers. I mean, there's a lot of great women drummers, too. But, I mean, it's like, you know, drummers... It's always about speed. It's always about you know uh, drumming gymnastics. Uh, whereas how you make a living as a drummer is playing beats and mm -hmm. feel, making it feel good. But you know you don't want to you don't want to get into a soloing contest with Vinnie Caliuta or any of these guys that are you know the, the Neil Peart. Um, you know you you just do not want to do that. But you got to. I did get to play with Sting. It was, it was just, great because yes. I was a huge Police fan, so I knew all the material verbatim. I yeah. love the Police too. I love the deeper cuts always, not so much the radio hits, but exactly. the deeper exactly. album cuts. Played, they did some uh, really cool stuff. I don't like the idea that he turned every live song into a reggae song, <laughs> like rock yeah. and yeah. Do, do, do. You know steel drum and stuff like everything. When you see him live, it all has a reggae. He did, yeah. he, he's going, I'm tired of playing it the way you know it, so I'm going to do my reggae version of every song. But he's a little too reggae for me, okay. or raga, whatever right. he Back said, then but. when we, we were touring with the 93, he was still doing it the way it sounded like on the records. And right. so when Vinny was late, the drummer, he said, Phil, get up there. And Phil, right. Phil's like, no, no, that's Vinny's kit, man, because right. as, you know, as you know, you don't play another guitar player's guitar, Not you really. don't. And Phil was like, I don't think so. And, and Sting's like, I own that set. Get up there. <laughs> and he goes, what do you know, Phil? And uh, what was the song? I called Driven to Tears. That's a kind of a deep yeah, cut. Yeah, that's a, that's a perfect. Dun, 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 it, opens, dun, dun, it opens with drums. Blip, 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 boom, boom. Dun, and I got to say, because Phil won't dun, brag, but, but. Sting, after about three seconds of Phil starting that song, looked around like, holy shit, I haven't <laughs> heard that song like this in a while. Because he knows right. every Stuart, not every yeah. Stuart Copeland, like, but he, he definitely studied the man. And I Sting did. was kind of like, whoa. That so. was fun. That was fun. And then <laughs> Vinny showed up. And he came in from the, from the side and looked at me like, oh, you're going to play. <laughs> and when I finally got done, he came and sat down and then blew a like, three-minute solo that was just like, wow. It was, yeah. you know, this, now, I've found the boss. <laughs> most people who are late get angry at the people who carry on with their lives yeah, maybe. when they're late. Like the the number I've gotten a million arguments with late people where they're like, what are you doing? You started the thing. It's like, you're supposed to be here a half hour ago. And it, I, okay. You're angry at me, but you're late. Like, can we, let's focus on that for <laughs> yeah. a second, which people Let alone sound check, you know, at a, a arena show for sting. I mean, be, yeah, be on time. Yeah, well, Sorry, what, what, by the way, What's the call time for the sound check? Five in the afternoon? Yeah, like it's not like afternoon. your alarm didn't five go off. Uh, That's five o'clock. Yeah, he was, you know, moseying in. It's not really like he needed to sound check. I mean, he he's didn't one of the it. greatest he's drummers ever to live. Ever. So yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, he, he was uh, just moseying on in. But uh, I got a chance. It was great. So he got to play with things. So the, you guys were touring and opening for the yeah. police. Yes, we were opening, then. and people would come in. You know th this. Th the place would fill up about halfway through our show, and like, oh, there's an opening band, how cute, you know. Mm -hmm. And then we played Disneyland. Like, oh, they're these guys. So by the end of the, our set, they finally knew who we were. You know, there is a something nice and a and a bit of a strategy of playing and watching the venue fill up versus watching it empty out. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's just, there's a psychological dynamic that's powerful. And I'm not in a band, and I didn't open for the police, but I have played my fair share of celebrity softball games. Yes, you have. And Dodger Stadium used to do their celebrity softball game before the Dodgers game. Right. In which case, you'd be out on the field, and you'd watch Dodger Stadium fill up as you're playing. Uh, then they switched it to after the Dodger game. Oh. <laughs> you'd be up there and watch this whole place file yeah. out while you're playing <laughs> baseball in a baseball stadium. And everyone who's feeling. in the baseball stadium is going home. Yeah. I say do it before. And you yeah. guys, when you open, got to walk out there and see a half full. What was it? Was it like on average? Because I would have been, I'm a guy who went, to go see John Hyatt play 
um, with Stevie Ray Vaughan, or maybe it was Graham Park or something with Stevie Ray Vaughan. But I wanted to see John Hyatt. I got there early to see John Hyatt, and then I hung out for Stevie Ray, which was great. But I got there to see the opening act. And there's a certain amount of people that are just going to show up, right? But, like, what what is it, like, on average? You know, is it half full when you hit the stage? Is yeah, it quarter full? Like, a Greek theater, 5,000 is uh, capacity there. It's probably, you probably got 2,000 people in the house when you walk out, maybe 2,500. And then by the end of the set, there's 4,500 people there. And, you know, as a, as a young band, that's a that's a pretty sweet situation to be in when, you know, and you get fired up for that. You get your competitive nature like we're going to go out and kick this crowd's ass we are going to kick sting's crowd's ass tonight and um remember the know. very first show they oh, said yeah. 40 minutes 40 and we're like okay 40 minutes right. 40 minutes a long set yeah, yeah that was pretty good right. and we we you know we had our set timed out to go like 38 39 so we wouldn't go over we went over by 45 seconds and we got our asses chewed <laughs> you know what really we deserved oh, yeah. it we deserved it. You don't go over. We went over it. like by 45 seconds, and they said, you know, they, they chewed us out, and we're like, we are so sorry. We're going to have a guy. Police. Uh, sorry, not police. Sting. 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 And his. It wasn't Sting, obviously. Right. He did it, but it was a guy. And you know what? He chewed us out, and we deserved it. We kind of went, you know, you're right. We're going to have a guy you, at 39 minutes and 30 seconds, you know, 30 seconds, wherever we are, you know, end. So we did that for the next six shows we were landed right at right before 40 and he comes out the same guy this irish guy he comes out and he, i won't do the accent he just says you guys want to go 45 and i go ahead wow. and we did 45 the rest of the tour you learn a lot of valuable lessons like the other one you learn is that you it is unnecessary to say thanks everybody good night coming up next right. Sting. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to do that we learned that one early on too. That was uh, we got another message from their from their people. <laughs> yeah, they know who they came. You know, and the final thing was, don't take beer out of Sting's dressing room. We had a bus driver. We didn't do that. But the bus yeah, driver. our bus driver trying to be you know proactive because uh, uh, some nights we played the opening set with Sting, and then we'd pack it up, and then we'd go into town and play a club show at midnight. Wow, double header. That was so, fun. Yeah. So we, we packed our shit up one night, and uh, we get on our bus, and uh, our bus driver was like, hey, fellas, I got all the beer in the bus. It's all here. And, and we're going toward the gate where you get out of the arena, and some guy is waving his arms like, stop this bus. The door opens. This guy gets on, and he's like, do you have – did anybody take beer out of Sting's dressing room? Because the oh, band is going to be off in about a minute and 30 seconds. And if the beer is not in the dressing room, you guys are off this tour. <laughs> wow. And, and we're just like, holy shit, who did it. that? And our bus driver was like, I thought it was our – and it was like crew, everybody, beer, get it into – because oh, when yeah. those guys came off, they wanted you know to have a beer. Uh, and that bus, I remember the bus driver. Told, I didn't know that was Strings beer. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was just a local just, hire. Uh, you know. Yeah. 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 Forty-five minutes is about as long as an opening oh, yeah. act hefty. gets to play. I mean, and by the way, that's enough. That's oh, I mean, that's plenty. I, I see bands that do twenty minutes. Yeah. 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 And now you got to buy onto the tours. We we were getting paid five hundred dollars a night. Which, you know, we didn't care how much. But now if you want to open for Sting or, you know, I won't say him, but any big act, the opening bands buy on for, what, a couple grand a night or five grand a night. I mean, it can night. vary, yeah. There's, oh, really? Yeah, there's, I mean, it's all so, sometimes not. I mean, sometimes in, in certain scenarios, the opening act is bringing enough value to the tour. They mm -hmm. sell a few tickets that, you know, they're going to get paid to be there. Other times, bands need, uh, you know, so they need underwriting. Buy -ons. There's buy -ons, like, It's yeah. sort of like bringer shows in comedy and in, I guess, music. There's a lot of... It's like uh, you... There's you a lot of I are in charge of bringing the audience right. to Oh, you There's buy a lot of vanity on. projects going on. on out there. People that have deep pockets that are trying to put on a music career and the way they get themselves out there is they buy on to the Motley Crue tour for, you know, 10 grand a night or whatever it is because they have money. That's an interesting huh. At least that's concept. what I've heard. I don't know anything about the Motley Crue tour. So. Right, but, but I believe but, the concept. But yeah. what you're saying is is you give us money, and then you'll get the experience of playing an arena. And the exposure. And the exposure of playing arena, which um, you, you will never you have. Yeah. And you can say you open for. That's right. And the so stage. there's value, value to that. Right. Hmm. 
You think I have <laughs> openers? You know, I have openers, <laughs> and I pay them forty dollars. Oh, no, no, forty dollars no. for fifteen $40? minutes. Fifteen minutes wow. of forty dollars. I mean, that's one hundred and sixty dollars an hour. Yeah. yeah, who makes that much? I'm going to rethink this. Yeah. They get the exposure. These guys ridiculous. are playing theaters. They never get a chance to play a theater. There you go. That's good. I'm going to write this down. <laughs> <laughs> that's wrong. God, yeah, we well, it kind of. <clears throat> It kind of makes sense. I mean, my earliest days in on K Rock Radio, uh, two years after you guys broke on K Rock, and I don't know if K Rock broke you guys, but that's where I heard you guys yeah. on on K Rock, and K Rock would break everybody, you know. And uh, my earliest experiences, I was doing comedy for free on on K Rock Radio. And I'd have my buddies from the valley, and they'd be going, hey, man, what are they paying you? And I'd go, nothing. I'm not going to pay it anything. They'd go, whoa, they're ripping you off, man. Like, what are you doing? And I just went, I should be paying them <laughs> to be on K-Rock because they're K-Rock, and right. I'm getting my voice on K-Rock radio. And, yeah, I got signed by Willie Morris and all these opportunities, and, and then I got paid. But, but the venue... They were doing me a favor, even though they weren't paying me. Everybody in show business starts for free. I mean, yes. you, you can, nobody wants to pay you to do anything at the beginning. I mean, you know, from the time we were playing in clubs when I was 16 years old down on, you know, there used to be a club called the Blah Blah Cafe on uh, Ventura, Ventura Boulevard. Boulevard. No, That's where well, I started playing in clubs. I was 16 years old. The Blah Blah. You, you had yeah. no audience. You had no value to the, you know, you were just in there making noise so they could, you know, sell their beer or whatever. The they Blah were Blah was on Ventura and Studio City. Yeah. And it was a little... Not the greatest club. It was a little... You know, I know. <laughs> we all have to start somewhere. Yeah. I sung an Elvis song on stage at the Blah Blah Cafe because in high school, there was a band. Uh, of, I wasn't in it. I couldn't play an instrument, but there were these knucklehead guys, and they had a band called the Oxy Five, and they played stupid songs, and they had a show at the Blah Blah yeah. Cafe. I also stole the diner booth that went to my apartment mm. from the back of the blah blah because they had that alley right. that yeah, ran yeah, along yeah. the back of yeah. the blah blah but that place couldn't have held more than 35 right people was, right no tiny tiny Pretty little green but with, that's, with the know. dada ever play there no. before dada was no. dada or was that just no. high school we, bands well we started at uh, uh club lingerie on mm -hmm. uh, on Sunset. Yeah, and, Club Lingerie. Uh, uh, club, uh, what, 88 on the west side. We oh, played yeah, there a bunch. Oh, yeah, very good. Uh, but we, I think we got signed out of Club Lingerie. That's where people were coming to see us when uh, before we got our record deal at uh, IRS. Yeah, it was kind of a classic, you know, almost out of a movie when Steve-O, because he had, you know, he talked like this, and he was an English guy, you know. When he's, From IRS. Yeah, yeah, I work at IRS Records, and uh, you guys want to make a record. You know, it was kind of like that. I mean, you know, 20 years in the making for all of us, really, or more, you know. But uh, it was a, I had never heard those exact words come out of a, a guy from a record company's mouth. Was yeah. the IRS, did they do a lot of like ska stuff and English stuff? Yeah, like they had specials English beat. Yeah. and English had, beat, that English kind of beat. stuff. Yeah. But they had the go, they had the go go's, they had the, uh, they had um, Stan Ridgeway, yeah. Wall of Voodoo. Wall of Voodoo. Wall and they had Voodoo. REM's first six records. Oh, wow. Yeah. So well, that's that's that a, had to be pretty exciting. Concrete Blonde, one of my favorite LA bands, Concrete Blonde. Yeah. They were awesome. They sing Joey yeah. with them? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's a good song. I love that song. Yeah. I don't know what's up with Concrete Blonde, but Joey's a good song. You know Joey, Chris? Chris? I, I, don't, uh, I don't even want to answer. Oh, you're gonna know. You're gonna know. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a ballad, but it's nice. I don't know what's nice about, it, but it's a well, well hooky crafted song. song. Very, very yeah, very, hooky, very, very hooky. Very hooky right? She had, she had a great voice. Johnette. Is fantastic. she alive? I believe so. I think she, she, for some reason, I think she left the country. She uh -huh. may live in France or something. I'm not positive about that, but. Um, I think they've they've reunited it a few times over the years, but I think that she was, from what I understand, she wasn't that eager to be out there doing doing it every night. Yeah, there's a lot of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. It's a weird. It's hard, man. It's hard. You know, I, I it is it hard, but it's not as hard as roofing is. No, no, you no. Know no. What I mean? doing, like doing, doing the gig itself, the, the, the pl yeah. playing of the show, that's the easy part. It's all the other stuff. Yeah, when you're you searching for a public toilet in Missouri at three in the morning <laughs> because you can't do that on the bus, and it's a really grody place, and you know that's yeah. uh, 
that's part of touring. I mean, yeah. but also you know being on stage in front of a thousand people and playing your songs and they're you know singing along to it. There's, there's nothing higher. There's nothing. There's nothing that, that's not hard at all. That's easy. That's, that's easy. That's the easy do. part. I'm talking about like booking these shows and dealing with these promoters. No, and I doing get all that it. Stuff. I see. But I think you're on the road a lot. I think I am, and and I think a lot of people look at work as this versus nothing. But I like to look at it as this versus working for the postal mm-hmm. department oh, or the DMV mm-hmm. or being a roofer right. or being a pool contractor or something. I think being a musician is the greatest job like, on earth. I do. And I would say if you have to do something, and let's just make it a rule. Let's just say you have, you to, have do to do something. You do have to do something. Then this something is a lot better than most something. 100%. I was just at dinner with an 11-year-old last week in San Francisco and he didn't say two words to me most of the night. He was a really great just, kid. Really just you kid. and the kid? <laughs> no, not, definitely not. Okay. Uh, with his family and my family uh, and my five-year-old. And at the very end, he hadn't said much. And uh, at the end, he, just, he goes, oh, by the way, Mike, I, I think you have like the really like, the coolest job ever. And uh-huh. that was it. And I'm like, oh, thanks. Thanks a lot, Tim. He's a good kid. What are your, what's the best licks? What do you love? Like, I... I uh, I just love Dim. I love that lick. Mm-hmm. I just love that lick. Here's so- how that lick came about, Adam. Um, if you want to hear the short story, please. Um, we were just we had the song, and uh, Phil goes, "It needs a lick at the beginning." And I said, <laughs> "It's yeah, my claim to fame right here." Yeah, <laughs> I said it does, and I went. Da 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 and uh, yeah, it was like that quick. Sometimes it happens that quick. Um, and it's funny because a lot of uh, bands, a lot of cover bands do that song more than Disneyland. They seem to love, oh, we love Dim. And it's cooler to do. You know, it's not. It the, is. It, I, it, there's, it's better than Disneyland, like even, better even than if Disneyland. Disneyland's more, more popular. The yeah. lick is great. The harmony is great. And, and it, the build you know, is sort of funny. crescendo they, they, and stuff. Oh, thanks, Adam. You know, they all, and, and what I was going to say is that they. They always do it slightly wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't play the high E, they play the B because they think that's where the lick should go. But I'm like, okay, you're just missing one little thing there. And I'll show them, like, oh, that, that does sound better. It's like, well, yeah, because I know that E goes over C and whatever. <laughs> whatever. So there is, some, there is some theory that goes into my head sometimes, but you don't want to uh, overuse your theory, but sometimes it comes in, into play. I want to hear it, Byron, if you can find that, just because it's, oh, it's always been. But I mean, there's certain. So we can, you know, for me, people go best rock song of all time, and I'll go Burn by Deep Purple, because that, to me, okay, is the best rockiness. First off, it's seven minutes long. Everyone gets, everybody gets their own solo, and <laughs> Ian, Ian Pace's drumming is, is amazing. unbelievable in that song. You know, but that's a, that's a that's an un, that's a left of center pick. I mean, the most well, people everybody has. Here's what drives me nuts: you if you're doing karaoke or you're picking best rock song all the time, you can't just go, you know, Michael Jordan's the best player. <laughs> you, know, you have to surprise, twist, mix it up a little, a little bit. Creativity. You know, a little creativity. Okay. Let's, let's let's have a debate here. You know what I mean? We can't just pick up kind of maybe Smoke on the Water or something yeah. or Michael Jackson pop song. You know, Billie Jean or something. I want something. I want a deeper cut for, I'm gonna for go, best. I'm going to go Black Dog by Zeppelin. Mm. Love. I just some, I don't know. It hit me when I was 14, and still every time. I, I'm not going to change that song, and I'm going to close my eyes and listen to it every time. All right. We'll hear a minute of that. Phil, what do you, what do you <clears> got? A great best rock song of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, no pressure. Yeah. Jeez. Um, I mean, I'm going to go... Uh, you know, I'm such a huge Beatles fan, and I, you, you know, gotta that, go Beatles. I gotta go Beatles. I have to go Beatles. So, uh, what's my what's the best uh, Beatles rock song? All right, I'll buy you a second. Uh, all right, go ahead. I may go with the Real Me by the Who. That's a good. Oh, that's well, a good okay, one. the that's Who. A, the that's who. a fucking killer. That is a killer rock. Don't get fooled again. Yeah, it's good. Those are good. all. Those are great. Those are great. 
All right, do we have uh, the the beginning licked at dim? Which here is one other thing about this it. about this track that is. Uh, uh, interesting about this track is that he plays the riff and it's at one tempo and then i kick in and it's at a completely new tempo because i, I just didn't feel like we were playing like, quite like fast enough. songs yeah. do that it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's like a nice too. it's a it, nice it open br we, breathy riff and then the drummer comes in and says no we're, we're gonna do it here <laughs> we were not married to the click track no, there was no click track on this <laughs> yeah this is live on the floor that's kind of cool i didn't know that actually. oh yeah check it out <laughs> Never keep my Zeppelin songs separated because they're never the names of the s lyrics. It's always just like what they don't see Black Dog in that song. It's the weirdest thing because they do all their Misty Mountain Hop and their uh, Achilles Last Stand and stuff that has nothing to do with anything. So it's totally confusing. But then when they name their records like Led Zeppelin One, Led Zeppelin Two, Led Zeppelin, so which is it? You know what I mean? Are you complicated? Or are you simple? Because they're super complicated with the song titles, but with the album numbers, they just go one Very after. Yeah. When did Led Zeppelin Four come out? Uh, after Led Zeppelin Three and yeah. before Five or Into the Outdoor? Right. Maybe I don't know what Five would have been. Every band though runs into the point where you you can't name your albums anymore. We have a self titled album the one we did on mca is just called dada we call it dada for it we you had have, a couple of different ideas and the record company said nah, no, nah, it's too tricky yeah right so All it right. ends up you know no title I'll play a minute of black dog yeah i that does a great call i forgot about black dog I'm always scared because I don't know the names of all right. the songs. Right. And then. i got to revise my pick. I want to go Stones. Go it's, Stones. It's Stones. I mean, I, I love the Rolling Stones, and our, our partner Joey saw them last night in Seattle. He said they were great. Even though they, all right. You know, I'm going Bitch. Bitch? Okay. If we're going Rolling Stones. I just, so I just love Gimme oh. Shelter. I just love that mm -hmm. whole vibe of the track. It's just like when it kicks in, the, the atmosphere of the moment, and when they do it live, it's the same thing. As soon as you hear that opening riff... It just creates such a, a a feeling in the room of uh, you know this like foreboding. I think the reason Evil we're not here. running into enough of this anymore is people, kids used to speak languages, play instruments, like they did stuff you had to learn in a basement for a long period of time, and now everyone's on their laptop and everyone's on their phone and everyone's out running around and ha doing a fun with AI or whatever it is, we're, we're no longer going to have these musicians, like these guys that were sometimes classically trained. Like the best are the Emerson, Lake, and Palmers of the world. Like the guys have this classical background that turned toward or Jethro Tull or guys like that. They had this classical bass, and then they turned it toward rock and roll. Those are always, to me, the funnest, the funnest right. bands. So people have mastered their instrument, and now they're going to rock with their instrument, even though they were doing, you know, Beethoven, Tchaikovsky right. five yeah, years Jimmy earlier. Yeah, Jimmy Page was a studio musician in in London for years, and he he's I, I'm tired of this. I, I want to get out and rock. But he he was such a on call guy, and he was a top top call, you know. Yeah, Th there are there are some incredible musicians out there. I mean, if you look on. If you scroll through, you know, Instagram Reels or TikTok or whatever platform, there are amazing. Pl I mean, from the drummer perspective, yeah. When I was coming yeah, up, from guitar players, but when I was coming up, I mean, it was like Neil Peart. There was one guy like that. There was a few guys who really had incredible chops, and now they're twelve-year-old kids that that blow. No, him. I get but, it. There's, but, but there's the nine-year-old girls who yeah. can play. But I don't think that they're, Dog, I, I, I think they're playing alone, you know, yes. they're, in, they're not in with other people creating, I mean, it, it, that, that, that thing that we all yeah. did when we were coming Get into up, a garage and get a cheap PA and go yeah, for it. That, that, that's where you really become a, a real musician. How do you guys feel about like the bands these days are playing with like clicks and backing tracks live as rock bands where it's like, um, you know, they sound really good. And then I'll go back to before bands did that, and I'll watch some of the bands. I'm like, oh yeah, they, they're, it does sound like they're missing something. So I, does it help? Do you guys are you guys embracing that? Uh, we don't do it. Um, I mean, we did. You know, back in the late '90s, we had uh, on that our fourth record that we made on MCA. There were some samples. We were just kind of getting into that, and, and I used to run some stuff from back on the drums. But personally, it didn't I, take uh, no. And I don't. You know, for our thing, 
like we, we want to be able to be uh, free to improvise and to go off the script and to just kind of go with it. If he wants to take a longer solo, you know, nothing is programmed. Nothing is to the click. You're going to feel things on the night. The energy of that night is going to get into the music. Some nights it might be a little more on top. Some nights it's going to be a little behind. Um, I mean, I did. I played in the Blue Man Group for a couple of years in Las Vegas, and that show was all clicked, and it was very regimented, and you had to do it the same way every night. And so it's a different kind of discipline. But for what we kind of do, for for real rock and roll, I don't think you want that involved. I want you want to be free. All right, let me give you guys a plug because I got to catch a flight out of Burbank. <laughs> Return to <laughs> Disneyland because I get to go. I'm going to have that talk with my opener. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you doing me a favor? Really? Yeah. You don't think I could do an extra 14 minutes? <laughs> exactly. You know what I could do with that $40? That's two, that's two and a half beers, bro. Boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I wouldn't steal that shit from Sting's dressing room either. I'll buy it myself. Uh, May 31st through August 24th, celebrating 30 here's, years here's, of Dada. Um, I, I can't believe I just interrupted a plug. But um, June uh, 8th. We're at uh, the Troubadour here in Los Angeles. I will oh, be awesome. there with bells on, Are looking you? up on the screen now to see if I'm going to uh, be anywhere. No, but yeah, you're in Vegas, oh. June eighth. Okay, am I in you're Vegas? In May, May thirty through June thirteenth. It looks like you're. Uh, oh, those are just individual dates. Oh, no, I'll okay. be there. All right, awesome. I'll be there. Uh, DadaForever.com. Great band, great live, and uh, I'll be there on June eighth. I got you. I, I got you. You got me. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Michael, awesome. Phil, thank you guys uh, so much. Harlan Williams, I want to thank him for coming in. I'm going to meet Irvine, and that'll be with Brad Williams at the Irvine Improv. That'll be May 23rd, and then uh, I'll be in Maryland at McGooby's Joke House. I'll be doing stand up there 31st. You are going to McGooby's Joke I am going that, to McGooby's. That was a joke. That's through real. June 1st. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be yeah. at Governor's, and I'll be in, doing some theaters in Oregon and Wolf. Washington. You just go to AdamCrow.com for all the live shows. Uh, Michael, Phil, thanks so much thanks, for coming Adam. in. Thanks, Adam. Always a pleasure. And until next time, this is Adam for Harlan and Michael and Phil saying mahalo.